The Adrian College Sports Network wants you to join us in thanking one of our sponsors, the Carlton Lodge of Adrian. The Carlton Lodge offers a comfortable and convenient lodging experience. Carlton has spacious rooms and suites, fit for a peaceful night's sleep. Their amenities include a hot tub and pool, a 24-hour fitness center, a business center, and much more. A huge thanks to Adrian College's Choice of Lodging for sponsoring Bulldog Athletics. Want to learn more about Adrian College Television? To find out more about ACTV, you can visit our website at adriancollege.tv. You can find direct links to our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms there. Bulldog students can submit a request to become an announcer for ACTV. Fans can see press releases about upcoming events and what's happening at the media production house. Visit adriancollege.tv for more. The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, and learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in.
Hello, students. This is President Dockin coming to you again from the uh, President's Office at Adrian College. Hey, I'm sending you this video with some great news. Despite all that's been happening with the pandemic, COVID-19, et cetera, we've been hard at work on campus, and the faculty have recently approved eight new degree programs, which I think are super exciting, and I want you guys to know about these so you can start to think about them as you think about your future academic career here. So here they are. The first one is in public health. We have both a major and a minor now in public health. Can you think of a more, more relevant major than public health right now, given all that's going on? The second one is supply chain management. If you're following the news, supply chain management is really where it's at. There are thousands of jobs. I happened to look before I got in this video. Some of these jobs pay over $100,000 a year right out of college. Public health pays very well as well. Great area to go into. The third new major that the faculty approved is human resources. And you know, every business, I mean, whether it's Adrian College or IBM or something in between, has a human resource office. Lots of jobs, great field to go into. The fourth is professional sales. Now, whatever your professional career, you have to know how to sell, whether you're selling yourself, whether you're selling goods, whether you're selling services, whether you're selling your character. Professional sales is a great thing to be trained in academically. The next one is eSports management. Now, eSports is just absolutely exploding across the country. And I know we have a lot of students that are athletes that would like to stay into sports. So we now have an eSports minor degree. It's a Hello and welcome to the campus of Western Michigan University here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Thanks so much for joining us as the Adrian College men's NCAA basketball team is battling with Division I Western Michigan University and the Broncos here tonight. For our pregame show, here's Matthew Kibbe and DJ Hughes. Welcome into the booth here, Matt Kibbe, DJ Hughes, ready to talk to you a little bit about tonight's contest here in the beautiful University Fieldhouse Arena many names when you look up when you look up it, uh, for the information DJ but you know it's going to be for basketball tonight Adrian College versus Western Michigan what should we expect tonight DJ just a general overview of what we're going to see on the floor um so basically we're going to see two teams that are hungry for their first win Adrian has come in and they've dropped three contests already this year to Trine Manchester and Bluffton all three really close games in which the Bulldogs were just one step away from grabbing a win. So they're looking to execute the things that Coach Lindsey has uh, brought uh, into the plan for them to get a win tonight. And then also the same thing for the Broncos. They've started off this year with two losses to Butler and Michigan State, two games that were also close for them in which they were just a few steps away from victory. You mentioned that game against Michigan State. That came last night for Western Michigan. We kind of had a little bit of a discussion. Should we be expecting a little bit of lag out of the Broncos considering they played less than, well, at this point, less than 24 hours ago. Yeah, um, maybe, but I'm not sure. You know, since they are looking for that win, they may start their starters that played last night and kind of just go right out of the gate and get out to an early lead and go from there. Or they may decide to play those backups that don't play as often and um, they're going to get the start. So they may not necessarily have tired legs and might be fresh. So there's kind of two ways that the Broncos could approach this game, and we're not really sure what we're going to get right off the bat. As a team, Western Michigan is averaging 61.5 points per game while giving up 72.5 points per game. How is that going to play to the benefit of the Bulldogs? Um, so obviously the defense is uh, – not the strong point of this Broncos team. So if the Bulldogs can get off to a rhythm early, maybe they can get some buckets and get some confidence going to where they can execute their offense and score more consistently than uh, they probably should, as most would say. Overall, I want to welcome everybody on the listening audience on WVAC Adrian 107.9 FM. Excited to have you here with us. We are, if you're tuned in on YouTube, as, as you can tell, an audio-only broadcast. Uh, on the other side of things, it's on ESPN+. Plus. So I'll say we are the free version of this game, but it's going to be in the audio-only format, and we're going to give you all the key information. Mike Prang, the assistant SID here, has Kyle Lindsay mic'd up tonight, and we have Megan Abbey going around take, getting some B-roll. So we're going to have some awesome packages after this game on social media. So you're going to want to make sure to be, stay tuned to Adrian College TV on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as at Adrian Bulldogs. That's the athletic page. As I mentioned that, I'm looking on the floor and we see the key player for this Bulldog team 
is Kendall Bellamy, who is averaging 21 points per game. He's going to be the guy that this offense runs through, DJ. What is he going to have to do against the top-tier Division I opponent in Western Michigan? Um, he's going to have to continue doing what he has been doing so far this year as he does lead all Division Three athletes this year in blocks so far. He leads the team in rebounding, and he also leads the team in scoring. He's kind of just their uh, Swiss Army knife along with Robert Warwick. So it's really going to be those two that are going to have to come out hard and set the pace for uh, this young squad. For Western, we, we continuously mention this, the 0-2 start for the year, but really this is the new age for Western Michigan. They're bringing in a new coach for this squad, and it's going to be, I can find my notes hidden way down here on, the, <laughs> on my page. Or no, not a new coach, excuse me. It is, it is a new coach. Head coach oh, yeah. Clayton Bates, this is his first game at home for Western Michigan, and this is going to be where he starts everything off yeah. for this new squad. Man, I, I got to think that Clayton is going to be a little nervous. He's replacing Steve Hawkins. Hawkins, the head coach here at Western Michigan for nearly two decades, an icon in high school basketball and college basketball in the state of Michigan, a well-known guy. So it's kind of exciting to have this historical moment for Clayton Bates being captured on the Adrian College Sports Network right now. Yeah, and I mean, he's definitely got some returners to help him out. Um, specifically, 6'1 guard, a junior, Michael Flowers, who last year averaged 15.7 points, four assists, um, and he had 28 steals over 32 games played. He was one of five Broncos to play um, all five games, and he also had a career high of 31 points against uh, University of Michigan last year in a tough Division One contest for the Broncos. Overall, the Broncos play in the MAC Division I, MAC foes. They go up against the teams, the likely team of Eastern Michigan, who the Bulldogs will see on Wednesday as well as they become the Road Warriors. We mentioned previously in our discussions with Coach Lindsey, Mike Prang, and some of the players even, they, they are Road Warriors this week. Two Division I opponents with only a day in between. Does that have any impact on you as a player, DJ, going, knowing that you're going to have two tough games as you're struggling off, to get off the start? Um, it depends on who you are as a player. Some of the, uh, these players may take it as a little tough, but others may see it as an opportunity, an opportunity to possibly get seen and move on elsewhere or an opportunity to just have a really good game and move up in the depth chart or just an opportunity for the entire team to learn. Honestly, if you're Adrian College, that's how you should be looking at this game is it's just a flat-out opportunity for everyone, for Coach Lindsay included. So at this point, it's it, you got to have a positive outlook and look at it, the fact that it's a positive um, opportunity for everyone involved. Quickly, Gabe Shry got a chance to talk to Coach Lindsay. Do you have any key bits that you want to introduce pregame before you bring him up during the game like I know you will? Yeah, absolutely. These are things I'm going to bring up and reference again and again. But um, the number one thing that I really like from talking to Coach Lindsay before the game in the locker room, I said, Coach, you know, I know you've been grilled over this game. Everybody has all these questions for you. Everyone's so excited for you. I said, Coach, are you nervous? He said, no, why would I be nervous? He said, this is a fantastic opportunity. These kids are going to remember this for the rest of their lives. They're an NCAA Division III basketball game driving 90 minutes northwest to do battle with the Big Bad Wolf here at Division I Western Michigan University and the Broncos. So nothing but good feelings here tonight for both programs. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're excited to have you here on the Adrian College Sportsnet for all of the action. We are going to take a short break and get you underway here with our opening clips on the Adrian College Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on 107.9 FM WVAC and live online free. You can listen at Adrian College TV. Bulldog fans connect with Adrian College TV on social media to be updated when we're broadcasting live, to see highlights, plays of the week, and much more. Adrian College Television is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. ACTV's handle is at Adrian College TV on every form of social media. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing to the home of the Bulldogs, Adrian College TV. Bulldog fans connect with Adrian. 
The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, and learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. Bulldog fans connect with Adrian College TV on social media to be updated when we're broadcasting live, to see highlights, plays of the week, and much more. Adrian College Television is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. ACTV's handle is at Adrian College TV on every form of social media. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing to the home of the Bulldogs, Adrian College TV. Continue to take pride and learn from Asa Mahan's leadership today. And the slam! 161 years of commitment to harnessing the power of creativity, ingenuity, community, and academic excellence. I believe that if you get your degree here, the world is going to feel like it's shrinking. Welcome back here to the campus of Western Michigan University. We're here inside of Reed Fieldhouse as the Bulldogs are undergoing introductions down on the floor here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Anyone just joining us, a historical moment. Boy, we're saying that a lot with COVID going around and uh, Adrian College is doing battle with a lot of NCAA Division I teams in various NCAA sports. Tonight, it's basketball. The Bulldogs on the road here in Kalamazoo, Michigan, inside of Reed Fieldhouse. You heard me right, doing battle with the WMU Broncos. I'm Gabriel Shry, Matthew Kibbe, DJ Hughes here with me. Hey, guys. I mean, I'm happy to be here. This is uh, kind of like a homecoming for me. Uh, I am from Kalamazoo, Michigan, went to Lori Norks High School. All of our uh, high school basketball games were right here in Reed Fieldhouse against uh, rival Kalamazoo Central right across the way. So I'm happy to be here. And it's a little different being up in the booth, though. Happy to be up here. You know, we're also so familiar with being at Kalamazoo College and, and participating as their MIAA foes. So it's, it's interesting to be here and you go to Kalamazoo and you take a, a left instead of a right and you come here to Western Michigan to do battle with the Broncos. Yeah, Broncos. I mean, the Hornets are literally right <laughs> across the street. I mean, we could walk right over to their athletic complex and, I mean, we could put on a stream right now if there was <laughs> something going on. But we're here instead, and I'm happy to be here. Broncos huddling up before the contest here. Both teams ready to go, and the horn will sound. Western Michigan opened its season 0-2. Losses to Butler and Michigan State. Bulldogs currently 0-3 on the year. They lost to Trine, Manchester, and Bluffton, hoping to right the ship here tonight in what would be a miracle <laughs> against Western yeah. Michigan University. <laughs> yeah, it would be something if, if Adrian can pull off the victory here, a huge morality boost, as well as just something to look good on the season resume. Absolutely. Bulldogs starting five, tanks to the floor. DJ, tell me who they are. 
So starting five tonight is going to be number two, Tyler Guillory, number three, Connor Pelham, number 20, Gabe McDevitt, number five, Robert Warwick, and number 13, Kendall Bellamy. Folks at home will hear me talk a lot about Connor Pelham here tonight. I have a soft spot for him. I was at his first varsity start at Michigan Center High School, covering him on JTV in Jackson, <laughs> Michigan. Pretty fun to see him move on and play collegiate basketball at my alma mater and get to cover him again. Broncos win the opening tip, driving down low, a little kiss off the glass, and we're underway. It's 2-0 as Greg Lee opens the scoring, the senior from Rockford, Illinois. Bulldogs quickly down the floor. Warwick comes close side of the arc. Tyler Guillory. Guillory goes right back to him. He fires from mid-range. This no good off the iron. Board here by the Broncos running the floor quickly. Quick pass back. Lee wants to drive. Met up there by Bellamy. Kicks it outside on top of the arc. Pass is nearly intercepted by the Bulldogs. Swatted at twice, driving and firing. This one a nice board, absolutely battling for it. Bronco nice. ball rims all around and falls into the hands of Connor Pelham, who gets his first board of the night. That's what it's going to take for the Bulldog defense. Got to stay tall and don't get a foul. You don't give him three points. 2 nothing. a Bronco lead here as Adrian turns the ball over. 59 seconds into the contest. Not surprised that they've turned it over already. I think they need to just slow it down a little bit. They're a little anxious, a little nervous, a little excited to be playing a D1 squad. So they just got to slow it down and run their offense the way that Lindsay has prepared them to. Artis White dishes this one away. Drive and firing right there. Nice bucket over the head of Warwick. Easily ladling that one up and in. Nolan Ansara, the junior. Ansara, a local guy from Lambertville, Michigan. Stayed in his home state, coming over to play for the Broncos. Bellamy drives, some trouble down inside, and he loses the ball there. Yeah, correction on that last play. That was Titus Wright from Thomasville, Georgia. Actually, he's a freshman all the way up from Georgia. They're uh, excited to get a player like him up here. They said he's physical down low and likes to score in the post. Quick pass, close side, Cruz Jr. Jr. centered this one up. Ball comes back to right, the sophomore. Cruz Jr. drives and fires. This one off the glass, and it's good. This one goes. It's 6-0 Western Michigan University here inside of Reed Fieldhouse. Warwick along the arc. Hands this one off. Bulldog man drives down into the paint, and he's in trouble underneath of the basket as he tried to dish this off of the Bronco leg. Yeah, defense is uh, really swarming here for the Broncos. They're definitely all over the Bulldogs, and they're not looking to uh, let them get any confidence here early and let them stay in the game. Couple of quick passes and the slam dunk to make it 8 nothing. Wow, Broncos looking hot here early. A big play from the sophomore from Thomasville, Georgia. Yeah, that was Titus Wright again. Uh, he was ranked in the top 150 players in the state of Georgia. He led his team to a, a Sweet 16 as well and was named to the 2017-18 oh, nice Times move. Enterprise All-Area Basketball Team. And a nice play in response by the junior Kendall Bellamy from Indianapolis. He averages 21 for the Bulldogs so far this year. I, I'm not surprised to see them go to him early. Down low, Bellamy doing battle with a big man from Georgia. We've been talking about him all night so far, the six foot eight center. You're gonna see that a lot. The, the Broncos are gonna drive. They know what they can do. They know they're, they're bigger and faster than Adrian. So you're gonna see them take advantage of that paint area. Watch it all night. That's where you're gonna see a lot of points come for Western. Yeah, he wasn't necessarily a double-double machine in high school, but he did have three of them during his senior year and a couple of them came in the playoffs. So he obviously knows when to step up in big games and I think they're looking to get him go er, uh, get him going early so the rest of the team can follow his lead. Then, you know, the, the key for the Bulldogs is gonna be what Bellamy was able to do on the last possession and just drive to the basket and lay it in. If you can get those guaranteed points where you're not having to be contested, that's where you're gonna get back into this game. Free throw falls again. Yeah, coming in for the Broncos early. We had two substitutions. We're going to have a guard all the way down from Houston, Texas, number four, De Daylon Hamilton. And then we're also going to have a forward all the way from Tampa Bay, Florida, over at Berkeley, 
prep school, uh, Chase Bars, checking to the game for the Broncos. Bellamy looking for three here on the board, easily gathered by the Broncos. Running the floor quickly, wanted to fire from behind the arc. Pass comes down across to Bars. Bars sent it away, and the whistle sounds. Come on, ref. I mean, yeah, he swatted down. You kind of got to call it, but th that sounded like all ball from here. Maybe the earmuffs have me a little muffled, though. <laughs> Three minutes, seven seconds gone, nine to the tally. Western Michigan lead. Long pass to Bars. Bars gives it away quickly. Broncos working the ball around the arc, waiting for some space here. Shot clock running. This one taken at by Connor Pelham. Tried to swat it out of the air. Defensively against Bars, Warwick in trouble, and as he goes to the floor, the ball goes back to the Bulldogs on the foul. That's a way to take a foul there, and, and again, that's, it's going to be those gritty plays that are going to help Adrian in this contest. you got to keep it manageable, keep it close. You know Western Michigan's got the offensive power. You need to play smart defense and don't look flustered on the court. I wouldn't expect anybody else to be the one to take that foul. Robert Warwick. The gritty guy here for the Bulldogs. The first one down on the floor when the ball is loose. First one diving for a ball going out of bounds. Not a surprise. Bulldogs down the floor behind the arc. Quick handoff and back up to Warwick from three-point land. This one no good. Rimmed around, trying to keep that in play and unable to do so. Say, stays with Adrian. That's what you need. That's what you need. That's a smart play by the Bulldogs, going hard after the rebound and then letting it fall out of bounds. Set up your inbound play and trust yourself with the 20-second reset. Pelham takes the handoff here. Pass far side, long ball off the glass. This one no good either. Tyler Guillory fired, hoping for that one to take a friendly bounce and couldn't get the angle he was looking for. Travel by the Broncos. This one goes back to Adrian. Yeah, on that last possession for the Bulldogs, a little bit of a quick shot. I mean, inbound pass, one more pass, and then a shot. Like, you know, kind of work your way through your offense. Get a couple looks. Don't necessarily take the first look. Take the best look. And maybe we can see some points get up, uh, up on the board for the Bulldogs. Coming down the floor, Adrian working offensively. Bellamy. Just inside the arc, he lets one go, that's Cash. Came off the glass. 9-4 the tally, Adrian down by five here with four minutes and 20 seconds gone in the first half of play. Broncos back on the offensive end of the floor, dishing this one all around. Down low into the paint, Bars having trouble, scooped up by Connor Pelham. Pelham driving down the floor, stops up at the arc and gives this off to Bellamy. Bellamy, quick cross, drives, fires, and the hand in his face too much to overcome as Bars gets the board. Stripped away by Warwick. This one nearly sent out of play as Bars regathers. Those right there, two great defensive plays from the Bulldogs is what you need to stay in this game. They're able to now get another turnover with a 10-second violation here in the half court as we're going to get the first media time out of the half. We'll take a short break. Be right back here on the Adrian College Sports Network. It's currently 9-4 in favor of the Broncos. Kibbe, the current student body president here at Adrian College. I chose AC because the campus simply feels like home. Everywhere I go, I know the amenities are there to help me succeed and get to the next level in my career. If you want to see what Adrian College has to offer, you can schedule an in-person visit at adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Kibby, the current student body president. Welcome back here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Gabriel Shry here with Matthew Kibby, DJ Hughes. Thanks for being with us on Adrian College TV for our radio broadcast. And on your radio dial, 107.9 FM, WVAC, Adrian College Radio. We're excited for this contest here today. The Bulldogs on the road doing battle inside of the Reed Fieldhouse with Division I Western Michigan University and the Broncos. Bulldogs right now, they're, we're in that media timeout, but they got to take advantage of the they got to take advantage of the, the mistakes that Western has been making so far. A travel earlier, just a 10-second violation there on the come up. So they, they got to take advantage of these. Bellamy's got to get going, get some scores as well, and just look, take it. You, you can't let Western get too ahead of you here. You, you got to take advantage of these mistakes. Like we were saying, 
and make it so that this team is close. Get, make this game close. That's what's going to help you. I mean, so far, their defense has kept this game close. It's 9-4 to four with uh, just over four minutes gone in this first half. And honestly, it shouldn't be 9-4, to four, as most people would say. It's D3 versus D1. But with the way that Bulldogs come out and compete, they play hard every time they step out into the floor, and that's why this game is close. The reason they're not doing so well offensively is there is a lot of um, isolation, one-on-one -on -one dribbling up top. They got to get the ball movement, got to get some picks, some body movement, and that right there will confuse the defense, and that will get them open shot opportunities. Four minutes, 43 seconds gone in half number one. It's 9-4 Western Michigan University as they return to the floor. And the Bulldogs will start with a basketball here following the media timeout. Connor Pelham inbounding the ball for Adrian. Looking and waiting here for space to be created. Gets what he was looking for, sending that one into play there to the likes of Ansara. Bellamy back to Ansara, wanted to fire from three-point land. Bars jumped up in the air, made that too difficult. Adrian still working this one around. Seven seconds on the shot clock, pressure building as he fires from three-point land, and nothing doing there for Gabe McDevitt. Ball back to the Broncos who are in trouble down low. Pelham grabs this one up, but the whistle will sound as I believe they hit Bellamy with a foul. Yeah, they did on that. That's going to be a second personal of the half. So he's getting to that point where Coach Lindsay's going to have to think, uh, do we need to sit him or are we going to play him and let him just kind of get through the motions and, and play this game? I'm going to tell you right now, everyone in the gym knows, and so does Kendall Bellamy. He's coming out right now. I mean, as soon as the foul went up, he put up two fingers looking right at the bench. He knows he's got two fouls. The bench knows. Robert Ward comes back in for him as Gay McDevitt comes out as well. And our very own Darius Wooten is now going to check into the game. Hey. And we're going to be able to see one of our <laughs> ACTV get a big opportunity in some D1 competition. That's my guy, dude. He knows what he's doing when he's working on ACTV. Let's see if it translates to the court. Got to say I'm very proud. Good <laughs> hire. <laughs> good hire. We got a couple of those good hires. That's right. We got some real NCAA talent working at Adrian <laughs> College TV this year. Quick pass to Robert Warwick. Warwick in trouble. Wants to go to Pelham. Turns, driving, still inside the paint, still with the ball. Spins again, fires off the back foot. This one grabbed out of midair by Bars. Bars dishes this one quickly to Artis White. Artis White fires from mid-range. This off the front of the iron and sent out of play by the Broncos. This will go back to Adrian's Bulldogs now. Great, great move down on the other end by Robert. But, I mean, hey, go up after the first fake. You had him jumping. At the least, you get free throws off the foul. Got to take advantage of small mental laps that the Broncos make. Junior point guard from Cincinnati kicks it over to Warwick. Now down low, firing from short range. Nothing doing for Ansara. Broncos moving quickly. They lead 9-4 here at home. Five minutes, 50 seconds gone here in half number one. Quick pass just inside of the arc. Broncos working with it. That's Jalen Holmes. He's from Gary, Indiana. Artis White. Driving, wanted to fire instead, dishes it away. Quick pass back up top of the arc, nearly out of play, and Dalen Hamilton extending his full reach there to grab the ball. He'll finish the play with a quick mid-range jumper. Good job by Western there. They had the shot clock winding down. They were able to get that shot up right before the shot clock buzzer went off. And nothing to be upset there uh, if you're a uh, Bulldog or a Bulldog fan. That was a great defensive possession, and you got them down to two or three seconds on the shot clock. You cannot be upset. Warwick alongside the arc, drives, fires. This one goes in front of the rim and is grabbed out of the midair there. Darius Wooten fighting for the ball, can't get a hold of it. Broncos back to work offensively as Chase Bars dishes this off. Artis White wants to drive. Instead, back up top of the arc. And that's it up and down there. Not going to call that an up and down because he had him uh, he had him pinned on the ball. So we're going to call it jump ball and possession goes to Adrian because uh, Broncos had won the tip ball. Yeah, I didn't think you you didn't think I knew that, huh? Yeah, I, I think you know a lot. <laughs> I think you know more than you let on. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit. Bulldogs back to work. There's that junior guard again from Cincinnati, Darius Wooten. Wooten wants to drive. He's fended off. Goes to Warwick. Warwick in trouble here. The long defender giving him fits. Quick pass down. Oh, nice off play. the glass and good for Adrian. 11-6. Kobe and Price. I said that's junior <laughs> transfer <laughs> from uh, Detroit, Michigan. Kobe Price, who had himself a pretty decent game in their opener against Trine. Saw some good time 
and uh, was able to really make some things happen, both on the offensive defensive end. So looking for the same thing tonight. Tyler Guillory goes up for the board. Seven minutes, 32 seconds gone here in half number one. It's 11-6 Western Michigan as they create the turnover. Quick pass on the move. Artis White fires down low. This one down low in the paint and nothing Ooh. doing as the Bulldogs get the board here. Ansara gathered that one up, gave it to Warwick. Nice play there by Warwick on the defensive side. Wooten goes back to Ansara. Three ball, no good off the front of the rim. The first three that goes in for this Bulldog oh, they're gonna squad, go crazy. the bench is going to go nuts, <laughs> and I think I'm going to go nuts <laughs> up here too because everyone has pretty much gone in and out of the room. Gorgeous pass right there by Artis White, just unable to finish down low for the Broncos. Something that I'm looking at right now, you know, in the age of COVID, the stands are pulled in, the players are spread out on the bench, but it's something where you're not used to seeing them. They're getting up, moseying around a little bit, uh, it, being excited for their team, something you don't really get to do when you're pinned in. You have the crowd over top of you, which could be a benefit for Adrian College not having this w, WMU crowd hanging over top of them. Yeah, and they can feed off the energy that their teammates yep. give them. Nothing is uh, better than the bench reaction. Yeah. yeah, you love having fans there screaming for you, but when you know that your brothers that you fight with every day are screaming hard for you, you feel a little bit better. From the charity stripe, this one falls. 12-6, Western Michigan lead. They've doubled up the Bulldogs. 12-0-1 to go in the first half. I want to see something here from the Bulldogs. I think you got to hit a three, a big shot, get a big lay, and I think you need something for that bench to get going. Adrian's Bulldogs inbounding here to Darius Wooten. Wooten dishes this off. Bellamy wants to fire just inside the arc. That's no good. Came off the back of the iron. Lots of space for the Broncos. Artis White drives, and he's hit by Warwick there. Yeah, you've said Artis White uh, plenty of times already, and he's a freshman guard uh, right here from Ken, Michigan, attended Ken High School, finished up uh, runner-up as Mr. Uh, basketball here for Michigan, averaging 21.5 points, 6.5 rebounds, 5.5 assists doing the same thing to lead this Broncos squad. 12-6 Broncos. We'll take a break. Be right back here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. Adrian College's 2020-2021 enrollment has set a new record at 1,865 students. The incoming freshman class of 602 new students helped set the new record. This is the 13th consecutive year the Bulldogs have had an incoming class of more than 500 freshmen. Nearly 6,000 high school seniors applied to attend Adrian College this fall. Why do so many students choose Adrian? Adrian is constantly expanding majors offered to incoming freshmen. If you're a high schooler or know someone who is looking at taking their education to the next level, AC could be the answer. To see the programs Adrian offers, learn more about the process, schedule a visit, and even apply today, visit adrian.edu forward slash admissions adrian.edu forward slash admissions. We look forward to seeing you on campus. Welcome back here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Thanks for being with us. 12-6. Currently the score, Western Michigan has doubled up the Bulldogs here. Eight minutes, 15 seconds gone in half number one. I'm Gabriel Shry, Matt Kibbe, DJ Hughes here with me. It's been a good one so far. It's something oh, yeah. you, you don't really expect, a, a six-point lead for Western going into the second media timeout of the day. And it, it look, the Bulldogs have looked good, missed a couple shots. The defense has been good, just giving up a, maybe too many fouls here. Got to kind of tighten that up a little bit. Kendall Bellamy sitting on the floor with two right now. So you, you got to tighten up a little bit. I mean, it easily could be a tie game right now. Yeah. Had a couple of these threes that have rattled in and out for the Bulldogs that gone in. So definitely nothing for the Bulldogs to hang their hats on. They just got to keep fighting the way they have and move the ball a little bit more on offense. And I think things will click. Western Michigan. Opened its season, 0-2, losses to Butler and Michigan State. Butler coming up with a 66-62 win, the Spartans 79-61. First year head coach Clayton Bates getting his home opener here tonight. Spent lots of time as an assistant with the Broncos. Darius Wooten down the floor after the Broncos converted on two free throws. It's 14-6 now, WMU lead. They get the ball right back on an interception there. Artis White, quick pass. 
Western forward drives down low off the glass, no good, and the board by Bellamy for the Bulldogs. Raphael Cruz Jr. fired down low, couldn't convert. Warwick, quick pass close side. Wooten wants to shoot. Wooten with two moves gives it back to Bellamy. Bellamy's turn to try and make some magic happen. Goes down low, this one up and all around the rim before it falls for the Bulldogs. It's 14-8. What a finish, but I'd also like to see a little bit of a higher IQ play there to notice that the other side of the rim was open and to go ahead and reverse lay it or maybe even reverse slam it. Much easier two points, but we'll take any two points we can get. Broncos fire Artis White from three-point land. Nothing doing as Bellamy gets the board. Bellamy on the move, looking, waiting, quick move and driving. Fires just outside the paint, nearly came off the glass down in, but instead just off the side of the rim there. Artis White, his turn to work offensively, goes to Cruz Jr. He's on the far side of the arc. Pass down inside, backing his way down in there. Greg Lee and this one ladled up and towards the iron, nothing doing as this one skeeters out of play. It's gonna be a Bronco basketball. Man, I really wish this was inside the last two <laughs> minutes of the half so we could see some replay. Because I'm going to be honest, I kind of saw Kobe Price swipe at that ball and it hit off of the abdomen of the Broncos player there and went out of bounds off of White. But White's going to retain possession here. We are at a D1 school. We could see some replay happening here later on in this half. We should. 14-8 the score right now. It's a Bronco lead here on ACSN. Pass down low again off the glass. Nothing doing. Retaining possession and nice play. He's up there gobbling it up off the windows, keeping the play alive for WMU. I like how Bellamy was aware of his foul situation, just stayed up tall and didn't let him call it on him. And in our pregame notes, um, Coach Bates had alluded to um, Mr. Wright being extremely, extremely aggressive down low and fighting very hard for rebounds and putbacks. And we've seen it early already, him imposing his strength on the Bulldogs. Pelham going to be inbounding this one for Adrian College as Mr. TV checks out. <laughs> Mr. TV, I like We're that. calling him from now on. <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> WMU has doubled up the Bulldogs to this point. It's 16-8, to eight, and we are exactly halfway through the first half of play. 9.57 shows on the clock as the whistle sounds. Young kids, if you are watching how to play hard and make things happen when it seems like they can't happen, watch number five, Robert Warwick. That was an amazing post up. Granted, had he got the ball, he would have had a wide open layup, but he was fouled first. Either way, good thing happening for the Bulldogs. Warwick averages 12.7 points per game and 18 rebounds per game. He has a team high 12 assists and five steals. So that's exactly right. That's your player you should be talking about a lot. He makes plays all over the floor for Adrian College's Bulldogs. Guillory wants to go down low, nothing doing. Quick pass up top and the travel as this one goes back to WMU. That's one of those those things you look at, and you're going to look back at this game, and when you were trailing by eight points, you have a travel and a, a three ball that was probably going to hit. McDivitt can hit from three. He's their guy. Back down on the offensive end of the floor, Western Michigan U. That's Artis White. He wants to get to work. Instead, passes close side, long ball, no good off the iron as Pelham gets the board. And I mentioned it earlier. I'm going to bring it up again. Connor Pelham, a senior, here at Adrian College, he went to Michigan Center and a uh, big fan of his work. Three-point oh, line, cash! That's my boy right there, Connor Pelham. I've watched him play from a freshman in high school to a senior in college, and uh, it has been a pleasure. Full of heart and spirit, and he's a fantastic guy. Played at Jackson College, transferred to Spring Arbor University. This is his second year at AC, and uh, you love to see him be successful just because of what a nice guy he is off of the floor. Oh, look at this energy he has now after making the first three for the Bronco or Bulldogs. He's all over the four, picking up a, t a tie ball. Broncos are going to keep possession, but he's all over it now. Getting scrappy, and he's after it right there indeed. Ten minutes and eight seconds gone here in the second half. It's 16 to 10. Adrian College trailing by just six here inside of the Reed Fieldhouse on ACSN. Excited to see that first three go in for the Bulldogs because if you know anything about this Bulldogs basketball team, this once the first three goes in, a lot more seem to fall as well. I like how it's so quiet. <laughs> DJ lowered his voice. He doesn't want to disrupt the field house. <laughs> Inbounding pass from Artis White. Close side, mid-range jumper. This one clatters all around and won't fall as the whistle sounds. 
Yeah, it's a little weird for it to be so quiet in here. Like I it said, is odd. It's Kalamazoo bizarre. native. I've been to a few Chippewa Broncos games. <laughs> if anyone knows, that's a rivalry. That's a, that's a rivalry right there. <laughs> and this place is rocking. So for it to be so quiet, it's very, very weird. Well, I'm sure all of our fans who are tuned in here tonight have been watching sports uh, since they've returned. And uh, most sports, most Division One programs and professional programs are piping sound into their stadium here tonight. Not a peep to be heard. Long ball for the Broncos. This one rims around as well and won't fall. Board by Adrian's Bulldogs. They're on the move and getting to work offensively. That board came from Michael Williams, the freshman for this Bulldog team. High praise coming out of the Bulldog coaching staff for him. I mean, yeah, he's standing 6'10". He can shoot the ball a little bit as he rims the three out here. And, I mean, obviously he's going to be good down low at 6'10". So it's going to be really exciting to see him grow and flourish here at Adrian College. Senior from Houston, Texas, Lee tipped that out of place, so it'll remain an Adrian Bulldog basketball here. 11 minutes, 35 seconds gone. Take advantage of the height, get it down to Williams and let him lay it in and get this game a little bit closer. Bulldogs inbounding here. Trouble as the pass was off the mark. Now a good play coming for the Broncos. Alley-oop, and oh, this no. one nearly slammed home. Adrian just avoiding the slam dunk as this is tipped out of play by Tyler Guillory. You will take that play all day if you're if you're Kyle Lindsay. On a two-on-one, and they get nothing out of it. They're going to get the impound play here, but that's stellar defense by the Bulldogs. Yeah, great jump by Connor Pelham. Almost a poster, but then Tyler Guillory comes through on the back end with the block to save the possession for the Bulldogs. 16-10, Bronco lead up by six with 11 minutes and 43 seconds gone here in the first half. We'll be back on ACSN. Adrian College is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, character, hard work, grit, leaders who can electrify sold out crowds, got out a last line shift, will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more. Welcome back here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Live on Adrian College TV, you can tune in free from anywhere in the nation online. Find us on YouTube at adrian.edu forward slash live. Tune in to WVAC on wvac.adrian.edu, live 365. And on your radio dial, the old-fashioned way, 107.9 FM, WVAC. Something I want to look at, the team highs right now. Bellamy has six points for the Bulldogs. On the other side, Wright has seven for the Broncos. And you've seen this low-scoring affair where the defense is prominent. It's impressive to see two guys with almost half of the points in this game. Yeah, I mean, both teams are actually uh, better defensively. I mean, uh, this Broncos squad has held Butler and Michigan State to their lowest totals on the year so far. And the, Bron and the Bulldogs are obviously holding a D1 program so far uh, to 16 points with uh, just over eight minutes left to go here in the first half. Six foot six, Kendall Bellamy leads all NCAA Division Three schools in blocks so far this season. So not surprising to see him doing well so early on in this contest. Just 11 minutes and 43 seconds gone on the day here in half number one. Currently 16 to 10, a Bronco lead here inside of the Reed Fieldhouse. WMU inbounding here as silence shrouds the arena. Inbounding pass. Broncos working around, pass down low. This one laid up and in off the glass. What a play as Titus Wright, the sophomore, converts. Good body movement there by the Bulldogs, or good body movement there by the Broncos. Couple picks, got the defense confused and uh, ended up with a wide open layup there for Mr. Wright down low. 18-10 to tally now, following that conversion down low inside. And our first crowd noise of the night, they played a sound effect there following that one. <laughs> Yeah, weird after uh, we said that they weren't playing any. Right, working with this one, wants to pass it away. Goes to Artis White. Artis White drives, fires down low. Wow, what a play by Artis White. Standing at six foot tall and no more. He was among tall trees down low there and got the job done off the glass. 
Need Bulldogs, Warwick down low, splits the difference between two defenders. His turn to get the bucket. Needed that right there if you're the Bulldogs. You let the Broncos get two good plays and you needed a point there. Warwick was able to do it for the Bulldogs. And that was a gritty bucket. Oh, yeah. I mean, gritty, it, it should be his middle name. I mean, it probably isn't, <laughs> but <laughs> it should be with the way he plays. Pass down low. What a feed to the big man. He is just does not get the touch he needs on that one to drain it home. A good play by Titus Wright. Warwick coming back down the floor for Adrian's Bulldogs. He has the basketball right now. Working with the orange. Wants to fire. Defended heavily. Driving. Let's one go as he fades and the board goes to the Broncos. I like the idea of him taking the smaller guard down low and posting up. Great idea. Like, like they say, mouse in the house. Back him down. But he's got to see that the double team came and he had shooter Gabe McDevitt open on the wing. 13 minutes, 41 seconds gone here in half number one. Western Michigan University working with the basketball, and the pass leads to the foul down low. That's going to be Williams first for, for, the, for the game, the freshman. He's going to get checked out here. You want to keep that height on your bench and bring it in when you really think you need it. Only chasing eight right now. I think you can get away with it. Bring in some smaller guards. Play a little bit smaller. Play a little bit faster if you're the Bulldogs, and it looks like that's what Coach Kyle Lindsay is going to do. To the charity stripe goes the big man, Titus Wright. Mentioned it earlier, he stands six foot eight. Converts the first at the stripe. What a talented, multi-dimensional player. Yeah, he, he's, he's absolutely fun owning. He's fun to watch. He's absolutely owning the paint right now for the, for the Broncos. He's there, go through. That offense is flowing through him. I mean, he's about one notch on the dial off of a point guard, the way he moves. <laughs> he stands six foot eight. Yeah, I mean, he's he's extremely fast, extremely strong. He can jump out of the gym. And the, the Bulldogs are going to be in serious trouble if he gets that mid-range going that he can't hit. Guillory with a quick step back. Sends this across the arc over to Warwick. Warwick on the close side working with the basketball. He wants to take it himself. Spins twice and fires as the whistle will sound. He's going to be hit with a travel as the ball goes back to Western Michigan University. 21-12, WMU lead. 13 minutes, 40 seconds gone. Just six minutes to go and change here in half number one. 21-12, and I'm excited for the Bulldogs to be in. Only down nine with just over six minutes to go. They're playing hard defensively, and I just want to see that continue. Broncos pass this all around. Trouble up at the arc as he was double teamed. Now driving, and the whistle will sound just before he finishes there. On the floor, so no shot will count. But either way, the Bulldogs got to tighten up a little bit here on the defensive side of things. They're getting a little bit too expansive, playing a little bit too much using a little bit too much body here. So you're going to see them kind of tighten up a little bit. Don't let WMU kind of control the pace. Try and get control of the pace of the game and get back into the scoring column. Well, with the Broncos going to a, a four out, one in, they would have to extend out with the pressure. And I think they're afraid to do that in hopes that they would get beat on the drive and have to help defense. But that's what your help defense is for. So I think they should go ahead and extend out. Broncos couldn't get it done at the charity stripe. Gabe McDevitt took this down the floor. A couple of passes. Now Warwick with the ball. Robert Warwick wants to go. Rob spins. Looking. Driving. Fires close side of the arc on Sara off the glass. This nothing doing as WMU goes up and gathers this one. Now moving quickly. Trying to run the floor here. They'll slow it up and get a play going as Warwick goes to the steal. The Bronco goes to the floor and the whistle will sound. Ouch. Uh, I think that might have been a little bit of a bailout call in my opinion, but obviously I'm not wearing stripes tonight. He saw something a little different than I did. Uh, Broncos are going to the line for one and one. I'm pretty happy with the officiating so far tonight. I think it's clean. I, I wouldn't expect it in a game between a D1 and a D3 school, and I'm really impressed with how well they've called this. Yeah, I mean – being a basketball fan and playing for a few years, obviously I don't like most calls and most players don't like most calls. So for the most part, this has been a great officiated game. Though. Bulldogs back on the offensive end here. Five and a half minutes to go in the first half. They trail 23 to 12 as the Broncos lead here in Reed Fieldhouse. Thanks for being with us on ACSN. Pass down low off the knee of a Bronco. Western Michigan on the move offensively. Looking with the ball here, that's Cruz Jr. Running the point, Junior puts this one up high where no one can get it except for Bars. 
Bars ladles this down low, gathered and fires. This one rims around. Unbelievable board right there. Bulldogs trying to tip it to themselves. Cruz Jr. regathers. He wants to pass it again. And I think Western Michigan figured something out a few seconds ago. We're seeing them do it more now. They're realizing that they have so much height and athleticism. If they just pop that up high, Adrian can't get to it. Yep, going to be a travel here. He's moving a little bit too fast. But there, when the loose ball, Bulldogs have to grab that. They can't be tapping around. Um, loose balls are going to be few and far between. you got to take uh, advantage of the opportunities that are given to you. No, and the guys on the floor right there, six foot four, six foot eight, six foot six, and those verticals are insane. So how does Adrian compete with that? Well, you can't jump for the ball. You're not going to beat him. McDevitt no. with the basketball, the spin move, passing this one as he falls to the hardwood, and that'll be a travel. You know, the hard part to watch is the, the Broncos are giving the Bulldogs possessions that they really shouldn't have, and the Bulldogs aren't able to capitalize on them. And we see that the, the Broncos have an 11-point lead because of that. It'd be a lot closer if you capitalize on the Broncos' mistakes. 110%. Yeah, I mean, the Bulldogs are giving it right back to them pretty, most of the time that they're giving them these possessions. Drive and the shot off the glass right there is gorgeous for Adrian Martin. He was in good position to not get the foul. If anything, I thought... Maybe that one shouldn't have been a foul, but he was inside of the restricted zone, so if they were going to call a foul, it was not going to be offensive. That crowd noise is something else. I love it. <laughs> 420 left to go here in the first half, 25-12. Western Michigan lead here on ACSN. Gabriel Schrei here with Matthew Kibbe, DJ Hughes. Thank you for being with us. Find us at adrian.edu forward slash live if you want to listen to us on the web, or if you're going to hop in your car and you're in Illinois County, 107.9 FM, WVAC on your radio dial. Driving and in trouble is Robert Warwick as Adrian will maintain possession here. 4.16 now showing on the clock. Warwick going to be inbounding. Waiting, looking. Trouble here for the Bulldogs. Heavily defended by the Broncos on Sara back behind the arc. Working with the ball. Gets it right back from McDevitt. He wants to feed it to Warwick. Warwick battling down low. Long ball. No good off the front of the iron there for Adrian's man. Broncos on the move. Cruz Jr. wants to fire. Wow, what a gorgeous play off the glass. Let's talk about that athleticism from the senior from Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, I mean, he just took it all the way, got the ball, and just sprinted past all the Bulldogs. No one really stopped the ball, and that's rule number one in the fast break. He's got to stop the ball. Warwick trying to drive right there. The whistle will sound as he stumbles and loses his footing just outside of the paint. Break coming here. We're going to take one as well. It's 28-12 as Western Michigan starting to pull away from the Bulldogs. We'll be right back. 3.44 to go in the first half on ACSN. Want to see the Adrian College Outdoor Performance Band in action? The band performed on Adrian College TV, and you can watch the stream again anytime, anywhere. Professional audio technician Christopher Mominy beautifully captured the event, and you can listen to the entire performance now. Visit Adrian College TV on YouTube to listen to the concert. Welcome back here on the Adrian College Sports Network. I'm Gabe Shry here alongside me, Matt Kibbe, DJ Hughes. Thank you for joining us. 107.9 FM WVAC, Adrian College TV, live free on YouTube. 3.44 to go in the first half. 28-12, Division I basketball team, Western Michigan University's Broncos leading the Bulldogs here on the road. You know, something we're used to seeing all of a sudden is Adrian versus D1 opponents. We see it in hockey and now we're seeing it in basketball. It's something that's really incredible and some a positive that the age of COVID has really bought, brought to the school and to Adrian College Athletics is, is being able to play these games, even though you might have to travel a little bit farther, you might have to play a little bit tougher, but what an experience for, for the guys and, and the, the athletes to get against these D1 opponents. You can't beat it, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate Western Michigan University, Broncos Athletics, 
everyone for letting us be here. I can't tell you how much I appreciate Mike Duffy, Jeff Docking, yeah, Frank what Rebar. What a guy. Unbelievable. Uh, Kyle Lindsay, Patrick Stewart, Mike Prang. Because not only is this a great experience for these guys, it's a great experience for me, and most importantly to me, for you two. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. Well, I didn't get to do this as a student. And it's like Come as on. soon as anything big comes up here at Adrian College, well, not necessarily, obviously we're not there today, but here at Adrian College, they run to us and be like, do you want to send people? Do you want to go and do this? Yeah. They, they love throwing us opportunities. So big thank you out to the big honchos at Adrian College. We are very much appreciated. Got to give a shout out. You told us we're doing great. Megan Abbey running around the arena today, getting us some Squad. awesome B-roll. She does amazing work for ACTV as well. And we're just lucky to be here, lucky to be a part of this. In the age of COVID, a lot of schools aren't letting us go and be a part of the, of the game. And others are being full circle and letting us come and be a part of the contest. We've had this luck throughout the first semester, and we're going to have that sprint in the spring semester. And th these, these teams are going to be better because of these games when it really comes down to it. They're going to be a lot better, and they're going to be more prepared for MIAA play against those Division three schools when, you know, hey, we, we're holding 28-12 with only 320 left in the first half against a really good Western Michigan team that faced two tough opponents in Butler and Michigan State. And Michigan State was only 24 hours ago. Yeah, and a Michigan State team that's in the top ten in the country. So it's not just a slouch game at all. That's a very, very competitive game. And the Broncos hung around with those Spartans most of the game before eventually losing by 18 toward the tail end of that game. But this goes to show just what type of opportunity the Bulldogs have here to grow after playing such a good Broncos squad. Bulldogs back on the offensive end of the floor. Warwick drives, wants to fire, spins, pass to Connor Pelham. Connor Pelham wanted to let it go. Instead, the dish to Bellamy. Bellamy in trouble. He is double teamed. A third defender steps up as he fires and somehow cashes in. Wow. They get one bucket back from long range there. It's 28-14 as the Broncos still have Adrian doubled up. And I want to give one more note that's not on the floor, and then I want to get back to the game big time. I love seeing Mike Prang get this opportunity, too. I, we don't talk about him much. He's kind of like our stepbrother because he works <laughs> at the Merillat, and he doesn't work directly with us. But he makes a lot of stuff happen for us. Uh, makes my life a lot easier. He makes your guys' lives easier, even though you might not always see it, right? And I love seeing him. He's, he's doing stats for the game down on the floor, and there's a timeout, and he jumps up from his chair and nearly knocks it over and picks up his DSLR, and he's taking photos between plays. So it's cool to see a guy like that so excited to get an opportunity like this. I just love it. Trouble for Adrian right there as Warwick has the basketball. Driving, back on offense here. Bulldogs wanting to fire. Warwick still with it, spinning all around, and he ladles this up and in as the whistle will sound. That will go back to the Broncos. Too many steps. Yeah, Too he traveled. Steps on he in traveled. The paint. Paint. I'm, I'm going to guess that he dragged the back foot. He was close. He because was close. I thought he had it. His pivot foot never changed. and So unless he dragged it, that wasn't a travel. And So I'm just going to guess he dragged it. 212 left in the first half, 28-14. Broncos still have the Bulldogs doubled up. A couple of quick passes. They're down to our left here. WMU on oh, nice offense. Play. Warwick with a swat blocking away the pass, and he gets the intercept and the steal. And now the basketball back as he'll run the point here for Adrian's Bulldogs. Working with it along the arc. The handoff to Gabe McDevitt. McDevitt wants to fire up top. Warwick from three-point land. This off the front of the iron. And the Broncos go up top as Cruz Jr. gets the board here. Cruz Jr., quick stutter step, and that'll be a travel as this one goes back to AC. You know, the, the, the Bulldogs have had opportunities, and they've had they've made great plays on the defensive side of things, but they're not able to capitalize on the offensive end, and that's where we're seeing the key difference in the scoring margin is that on that side of things, they're, they're making the defensive stand, but they're not getting the offensive points. Yeah, a lot of the times they're literally throwing it right back to the Broncos on the very next play just a few seconds later. So they're getting these turnovers. They're creating turnovers and playing great defense. But once again, like you said, not capitalizing and scoring or even uh, creating free throw opportunities off of those turnovers either. 90 seconds in the first half as Bellamy steps up, fires from just inside the arc, nothing doing. Broncos back on offense. Artis White running the floor quickly. Pass close side. Cruz Jr. steps on Gabe McDevitt. Draws back. Now the pass to the big man. What a play. Ladling that up and in. It's Titus Wright, the sophomore from Thomasville, Georgia. He's a monster, guys. Yeah, he's, he's a having, monster. He's having a game. Yeah, he's got 12 points already. I mean, he's the only double-digit uh, scorer here in the game. And, yes, he is only a sophomore. Very, very young with a huge frame. 
artist. White long ball, no good. And that's surprising from him because, again, he's the leader for this Bronco team. He is electric. He might be worn out from battling the Spartans last night. Yeah, and, I mean, I saw him warming up. He didn't miss an open he's three. Good, he's so good. if he gets an open three, it might go in. Guillory just inside the arc, cashes one in. 30 to 16, 30 seconds left in the first half as the Broncos are back to work offensively. Yeah, it seems to be the game plan is to go to Kendo, but I think they got to get a few of these other players going, like Tyler Guillory, like Connor Pelham, like maybe Robert Warwick a little bit more to help him out. Driving, wanting to fire, that's Artis White. Pass close, sidebar from long range off the front of the iron. Seven seconds left in the half, Bulldogs offensively. Guillory fires with four seconds on the clock. This rim's all around, won't fall, and the Broncos will let the half expire. So at the halftime break, it is 30 to 16. The Bulldogs not doing too bad against their NCAA Division I opponent here on ACSN. We'll take a quick break. Be right back with some halftime analysis. Don't go anywhere. In its 2021 edition of America's Best Colleges, U.S. News & World Report has once again ranked Adrian College as a top regional college in the Midwest. The institution was named to the Best Regional College's Midwest section for the seventh consecutive year and once again listed number two in the Most Innovative Schools category. In addition to these honors, Adrian College was also named to the Best Undergraduate Teaching and Best Value College lists. Adrian College has been established as a distinctive and innovative educational leader in the United States. The institution places priority on a culture of innovation and critical thinking. This is the 12th consecutive year Adrian College has been featured by U.S. News & World Report. You can see the full list of rankings and find more information on their website. For more information about Adrian College, visit adrian.edu. Welcome back to Western Michigan University here on the campus, well, at the campus of Western Michigan University. So used to not saying something like the D1 opponent, but overall, it's been a good game. Good game for the Bulldogs. The score right now, 30-16 in favor of Western Michigan. And with at the halftime break, leaders so far for this team, for this Western Michigan team is going to be Wright, who has 12 on the day. DJ, he's the big man for this Bronco team. What have you seen out of him? Oh, I mean, he's just imposed his will down low all night. Not a single, not a single player or a group of players here for the Bulldogs can do anything about it, to be honest. He's grabbed offensive rebounds. He's gone up and just went back right away with those offensive rebounds and scored. It's like he's just too big, too strong, too fast. On the other side for the Bulldogs, it's going to be eight points for Kendall Bellamy. He's kind of been who the Bulldogs have been going through throughout this whole entire contest. What do they need to change? What do they need to do to make something happen? We have assistant SID Mike Prang in the booth. Now, you've kind of been on the floor seeing this. What have you seen out of the Bulldogs, Kendall Bellamy, and others and company? I think they can really compete with these guys. I mean, we saw it earlier in the game. The game was not that far out of reach. We saw a 16-10 to 10 score at one point. Fortunately, Western Michigan kind of took control a little bit going uh, later in the second half. But the Bulldogs had some very solid possessions, a lot of stops. You know, the men's basketball team, they, they call them kills when you get three stops in a row. And they got about three or four kills right now. So they are playing very solid on defense. They're getting opportunities on offense. Their shots are just not falling. From both, from both of you really quickly, what do we need to see in the second half of play uh, for e each team, Western, to secure the victory? That, that is truth, truthfully expected out of them today. But for the Bulldogs, what do they need to do for the upset? So first, starting with the Bulldogs, they've already caused 10 turnovers and finished 14 defensive possessions with rebounds. So they have to continue to create opportunities for themselves offensively. But when they do get it down on the offensive end, they have to stop with the uh, – the isolation game. It's just too much dribble drive and not enough pa uh, ball rotation, not enough body rotation. Got to get some picks and some ball movement, some body movement as well to create offensive uh, opportunities that will bring forth buckets. And then as far as the Broncos, stop turning over so much and keep going inside. 
The inside has been working all game, whether it's been the Chase Bars or it's been the Titus Wright. They've both done well down low. Keep going down low. Yeah, I got to agree with that as well. But the big thing is just continue to play their games. The big thing for the Broncos is go after Kendall Bellamy and Nolan and Sarah. They both have three fouls already going into halftime. So that's a big thing that they should be able to target. But then as far as the Bulldogs, continue to play your game. They're getting the opportunities. They're playing solid on defense. I mean, think about it. Their first Division One game since the 2016-17 season, and through one half of play, you've only given up 30 points. That's not bad at all. So continue to play your game, find your open shots. They will start to fall, and then just continue to battle on defense. That's going to do it for our halftime thoughts. DJ Hughes, Mike Prang, I'm Matt Kibbe. The score right now, 30-16 to 16 in favor of Western Michigan University Broncos as they host the Adrian College Bulldogs here at Western Michigan University. We'll be back shortly to bring you this second half of play here on the Adrian College Sports Network. The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, and learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Matt Kibbe, the current student body president here at Adrian College. I chose AC because the campus simply feels like home. Everywhere I go, I know the amenities are there to help me succeed and get to the next level in my career. If you want to see what Adrian College has to offer, you can schedule an in-person visit at adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. If there was one word I was going to use to describe the communication arts program at Adrian College, it would be unique. Students find themselves on the radio, in front of and behind the camera, and directing their own programs. Students learn in a personalized environment that sets them up for a world of opportunities. Are you ready for your moment in the limelight? Learn more about the Rush Communications Center and Adrian College's communications program by visiting adrian.edu today. Yeah. Welcome back here inside of Reed Fieldhouse on ACSN. Our halftime report ongoing. Eight minutes until the second half is underway. Gabriel Shry here with Matt Kibbe, Megan Abbey, 30 to 16 the tally at the half. Only a 14 point deficit for the Bulldogs. And again, this is an NCAA Division III basketball team on the road against a Division I team that only lost by 19 points to Michigan State University, a top 10 basketball program in the nation last night. We're talking 24 hours ago that game ended. Pretty insane stuff. We're going to talk more about the game, but I brought you two on air with me here to talk a little bit about some of the, the other things going on. So I, I harped a little bit on Mike Prang and talked about how much I love seeing him having fun down there on the sideline. I'm really loving, I feel like you guys are eating this up. And Megan, you're down there in the front row of the bleachers filming this game. What's that like? It is. It's awesome being down there, especially in a Division I facility. It's very different from our little Adrian show <laughs> that we have over there. Um, it's nice to be able to kind of run around as much as I can and just see how, especially as what's interesting me is how ESPN is running things around here. I've kind of mm -hmm. gotten to like see closer to what they're doing. They have their communication. They've got headsets on. They're all just communicating with each other super well, and there's a lot that we do that compares to what they do and i think that's absolutely amazing that I, we, we're actually able to com compare to what they do on air kind of i've tried to mime what an espn does I, I would say we're somewhere between a jtv jackson in jackson michigan and a buckeye cable sports network in toledo ohio we're somewhere between there we're definitely not up to bcsn standards 
but we're doing some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Know, we've got a lot of cameras tied in. We've got some switchers. We've always got more than just two headsets running, and uh, we're pretty advanced with our software. We're doing things live. We're simulcasting onto the radio, and we can tie in as many as 10 people on air at the same time. Pretty crazy stuff for a Division three school, and you start to compare what we do to other schools in the conference, and then you really get a sense for yeah. how much we're accomplishing. And that's, that's not because of, I mean, of course there's planning that goes into that that I can take credit for, but the ambition comes from you guys. That comes from you two specifically and all the students that we've surrounded ourselves with. It's really incredible to see it flourish. You know, one of my favorite words at ACTV is yet. We're not there yet. Yeah, I love it. We're we're almost, all we say is yet. We're, yeah, we're always right there. We're just not there yet, and we're yeah. going to get there. That's the thing. And, and when we get to that point where we're comparing to ESPN, ESPN we're going to be saying we're not there yet because we want to be comparing to Fox and those pro broadcasts that we're so accustomed to seeing and, and where we get a lot of our inspiration from for ACTV comes from those broadcasts and comes from the stations that you're so used to watching when you grow up. And, and we know we're going to get there. We know we're we, – we, we humble brag ourselves. We do consider ourselves the best in the MIAA, but we always know that there's going to be better that we can compare to. We want to be better than Western Michigan's broadcast. We want to be better than U of M. We want to be better than those local icons that you're so used to watching on national television, and we know we're going to get there eventually. And I think what's so amazing about that, Matt, is we're student-run. With these other schools, these are professionals that have gone to school, trained, graduated, and now they're putting on a broadcast. We're learning it as we go. And to be able to say that we're kind of comparable to that and we're working towards that and we watch what they do and we kind of mimic it in our own broadcasts, I think that's absolutely amazing. I think you guys are being humble. I think at times <laughs> you're a lot better than the pros. And it's uh, sometimes it just comes down to dedication. And it's not so much how long you've been doing it or, or what you know, but just putting in the time. And uh, you guys do that week in and week out. And uh, you definitely make Adrian College proud. So you make me proud, too. We're going to take a short break. Be right back with our actual halftime analysis. Talk more about what's happening here at Reed Fieldhouse. Bulldogs only down by 14, 30 to 16 at the halftime break on ACSN. Constitution Day. The George W. Romney Institute for Law and Public Policy presented the annual Philip J. Perkowski Constitution Day Address on Adrian College TV this year. His presentation based on his extensive experience in the courtroom, promises to be revealing and thought-provoking. It's called Making the Words Matter, how all of us, not just the courts, can fulfill the promise of the Constitution. Please join me in welcoming Brett DeGroff. Using the arc of the moral universe quote too loosely carries with it a danger of magical thinking. Technically, we couldn't have expected the Constitution to do anything about it earlier. It was perfectly legal under the Constitution up to that point. The real action in this area is going to happen at the local level, in cities and in townships, because city and township governments fund and supervise police departments. You can watch his revealing and thought-provoking speech now on Adrian College TV. Thanks for being with us. Gabriel Shry here with Matt Kibbe, DJ Hughes, three minutes away from the second half of play after one half it is 30 to 16 a 14 point lead for the broncos of western michigan university that's right if you're just joining us you heard that right as it stands the bulldogs only trailing by 14 points to an ncaa division one basketball team this isn't just any team i told this story a few minutes ago so sorry if you were with us but this team only lost by 19 last night to top 10 in the nation, Michigan State University, Tom Izzo and his Spartans, the legendary basketball program. So this is no slouch team, and the Bulldogs really hanging in there. It's been a lot of fun to watch. We're having fun with it. There's lots of different things we can touch on, but I want you each to take 60 seconds. Let's start with you, DJ. What are you watching for here in the second half? How well the Bulldogs can continue to turn over the Broncos. They turned them over 10 times in the first half, so I would love to see them go ahead and turn them over some more. But this time, get away from the isolation game in the offense, score some fast break points, or set up a few pass and uh, picks so that they can get some open shots. On my side of things, I want to see the Bulldogs take advantage of the turnovers that the, the Broncos have given them throughout this whole entire contest. This game, realistically, should be a lot closer than it actually is. 30-16 to 16 
is a bigger lead than what Western has played like and what the Bulldogs have given up throughout this contest. It feels realistically it should probably be a 30-22-24 kind of game with how many turnovers the Broncos have, like you mentioned. I want to see the Bulldogs take advantage of those. Make your shots. Play your offense. Don't let Western dictate what you're going to do on offense because when it comes down to it, Western is playing their defense. Adrian's not playing their offense. Adrian's playing to the defense of Western. You got to know yourself, know your system. Coach Lindsay has a great system in place that worked last year when you made it into the NCAA tournament for the first time in what felt like forever. You know it works. You had the playmakers to do it. You might have lost a couple of those those key components with Jeremy Kalanji, but you have a Robert Wark, you have a Kendall Bellamy, you have all those players that can make up for the production that you lost, plus you have the freshmen, and you look at Williams and the junior Price who've come in and, and they can play really well for this Bulldog team. I wanna see everybody just calm the jitters down a little bit and play your game. All right, gentlemen, 30 seconds until half number two here on ACSN. Let me hit you with a couple of cliff notes and we'll get into the second half. First of all, congratulations to Mo Hanley, number 37 in the world for MLB prospects. That's right, number 37. He's an LHP at Adrian College, an Adrian Bulldog baseball player, and he is electric. So much fun to watch him pitch in the scrimmage this fall between the Bulldogs and the Bulldogs, the black and gold game. A couple of quotes from head coach Kyle Lindsay. We're coming off a historical year before the game, he told me we're playing western michigan tonight eastern michigan on wednesday don't miss that 7 p.m eastern standard time on the adrian college sports network with this crew right here Same. kyle told me hey it's really special gabe it's a special time to play basketball at adrian college he said our leadership at adrian college is incredible and that's why the bulldogs our basketball teams are playing so you can trace that back to jeff docking Frank Rebar, Mike Duffy. And that's exactly why these young men are here having this unbelievable opportunity, making a moonlight appearance on ESPN here tonight. And of course, they're on the hometown broadcast network, the Adrian College Sports Network. Second half getting underway. Bulldogs will start with a basketball down by 14. Kendall Bellamy with it from mid range. No good. Broncos go up, get the board. They're on the move quickly here. First up with the ball for Michigan. Artis White. Artis White running the point for WMU. Quick pass close side. Down along the arc, and this one going to go back to the Bulldogs, a turnover on the travel. You know, I credit that to Robert Wark. Once again, I've said his name. Seems like a thousand times tonight already. But there, that was the hardest he has made Titus Wright work all night for a post-up, and it ended up turning into an offensive foul. If they can continue to make him work hard down low, they can continue to frustrate him and uh, walk him into more of those mental laps. 36 seconds gone in the second half, 30 to 16. Bulldogs trail the WMU. Gabe McDevitt drives, tries to fire, and he is swatted at and loses the ball in midair. Coming down to that one is Cruz Jr., the senior for the Broncos. Cruz Jr., pass back up. Artis White working with it. Back near the half-court stripe. Guarded here by McDevitt. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Wants to drive. Quick step move. Pass back across the arc. Up and a little kiss off the glass as this one will fall for the senior, Greg Lee. It's 32-16, Western Michigan. Something you notice is Kendall Bellamy, who has three fouls on the floor, can't go as hard as he might normally go, knowing that he only has two to play with right now. So be paying attention to that throughout the second half. Warwick drives, fires this one off the glass, and Adrian College's Bulldogs get a bucket back. I've been screaming for it all night for them to use the pick and they finally use the pick, pick and pop. Robert Warwick gets a wide open lane to the rim, lays up, easy layup. Gorgeous play right there. Artis White back here offensively. Quick pass to Cruz Jr. Broncos trying to feed this down low. Greg Lee driving on Warwick, fires just inside the painted area. This off the iron, second chance bucket, no good either as the foul comes against Adrian's Bulldogs. Pelham getting a little too much down low. Every single pass, it seems like they just start going straight inside. Artist, uh, Artist Wright brings it up the floor, or Artist, Artist White, excuse me, brings it up the floor, drops it right down to Titus Wright, or he'll uh, drop it down to Lee or Bars, and then they look for the kick out. But most of the time, these guys are looking to score in the post. They're big, meaty guys down there that have great post games. 
Right, no good from the charity stripe right there. He'll try again. Quote from before the game from Adrian College men basketball head coach Kyle Lindsay. He told me, hey, we're playing four games. I can count on one hand how many D3 schools in the country have played four games. How cool is that? He said, that's remarkable. That's what he said to me. That's and he meant it. He meant it. And it's, it's cool to see this coach, this program, so bought in. They love playing basketball. Yeah, they do. I mean... I've seen these guys while they're some of the last students here left on campus at Adrian College. And when I see them leave practice, they have smiles on their face when they walk in and when they leave. So these guys are happy to be playing ball as the Broncos were able to get another free throw that they did miss. They missed the last two as there was a lane violation on the second free throw. Guillory wanted to drive, gives it off to Warwick. Warwick looking down low in the paint, pass back up to Guillory, he's along the arc, driving, firing down low and couldn't split the difference. Two defenders right there, Artis White with a ball now. Quick pass, far side, Broncos working with it. Back up top to Lee, Greg Lee the senior. Quick move, pass down low to right, stripped away, Connor Pelham with a steal. The senior from Michigan Center gives it off to Warwick. Nice play by him, McDevitt fires from long range. This clatters off of the iron and goes out of play. 32-18, 17-31 left in the game. Western Michigan Broncos up here on the road. I, I don't understand that last play. You get a turnover, you have numbers, and you walk it up. Run, go, use your numbers, get the fast break, and get a layup. Artis White gave this off. Cruz Jr. now with it. Cruz Jr. wants to work with the ball. Beating out Gabe McDevitt. Pass back up. Long ball from the arc. This one falls shy as Adrian gets the air ball back. Long ball. Connor Pelham dished it off to Robert Warwick who lost it right away. Artis White off of the steal. Passes it to Cruz Jr. He wanted to fire from the arc. Instead goes back to Artis White, the leader for this Bronco basketball team. He's been electric so far through two games. Tipped away by Warwick. Bulldogs working off of the steal. Guillory backdoor pass. Connor Pelham kicks it back up top of the arc to Warwick. Bellamy with a chance. Fires mid-range. This no good. Went around the iron. Popped back out. Artis White running the point now for WMU, and he'll slow the action up here a bit after a couple of fast breaks. Not upset at the shot there. Kendall Bellamy is leading the Bulldogs with eight points so far this year, or this uh, game, and he is the leading scorer for the Bulldogs this year. But he did have freshman Gabe McDevitt up top wide open for the three. Wanting to fire. This one clatters off the front of the iron and rolls in for right. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to keep saying it. He is a monster. Look at his size down low. The sheer physical dominance and ability in the painted area. And he's not hes not tall and skinny either. He's tall and big, but he moves like he's tall and skinny. He's big, he's fast, he's agile. Bellamy goes to Guillory. Guillory backing down Artis White. He's in trouble. He fires here from close range. This rim's all around and won't fall. Lee gets the board, dishes it over to Cruz Jr. He's running the point for Western Michigan. Quick pass, a high ball down low to Wright. Wright spins around Warwick, nothing doing for him. This one swatted at twice. Bulldogs couldn't get it. It'll skeeter out of play and remain with WMU. Media timeout coming up. It's 34-18 right now, a Western Michigan lead here inside of Reed Fieldhouse. We'll take a break. Be right back here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Continue your athletic career while also pursuing your educational career? Adrian College houses dozens of varsity and club programs right here on campus, along with 77 undergraduate degrees and 47 majors. Are you interested in learning more about the Bulldog experience? Visit adrianbulldogs.com and the Recruit Me tab to be recruited to play your sport of choice today. If you have what it takes, you could be a Bulldog in no time. Welcome back. WMU hosting Adrian College. The score right now, 34-18. Matt Kibbe, Gabriel Shry, Dijon Hughes up here in the booth making the trip down to the zoo, as they like to call it when we're here. What? Hey, it's on the court. You got to go zoo. with what's on the, court. on the court. It's on the court. It the does zoo. say the zoo. It does say the zoo. <laughs> is that what they call this? Yeah, we're, at the what we call we're at the zoo. We're at the zoo. We're at the zoo, man. The zoo? I don't know. It's Reed Fieldhouse. Good lucky I didn't say it because it sounded like da zoo. D A Z O O. <laughs> da zoo. That's what we call it's it. It's the zoo. That's, it could the be zoo. the zoo. It's the zoo. See, I, I don't want to say that because I'm not from here. So I was like, I'm I just going to go with what's on the court. I'm going to trust what's what's on the court. It's the zoo. The zoo. It's the zoo. Please don't say it like that. I'm a bitch. We're in the zoo. I can't hear the. <laughs> 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 I love it. 
We're in the midst of a media timeout, the under-16 timeout right now. As we mentioned, 34-18 the score. Western Michigan has looked really good over the course of this contest, and they're kind of getting to that point where they're pulling away. Adrian's going to need some buckets here to get back into this contest. Yeah, they stretched it out to 16 uh, points here in the uh, second half. Uh, the, the Bulldogs have only gotten two points so far on an easy Robert Ward layup off of a pick uh, that freed up some space from Kendall Bellamy. So the Bulldogs just got to go back to moving the ball around, getting some ball movement, and the Broncos are doing well down low, uh, specifically with Titus Wright, who has 14 points already here in this game. Western's going to have the inbound play here. It's going to come from Martin on the inbound, and they will look to extend their lead more here. It's 34-18, 15-40 left to go here. Matt Kibbe, Dijon Hughes, Gabriel Shry up in the booth. Western has it at the top of the key, right at the elbow, back up to three-point land, where Holmes is going to hang on to it. Shot bucket from three is hit by Martin, and the Bulldogs are going to be trailing even more so here, 37-18 as McDivitt brings it up the court and crosses the timeline. Correction there, Matt. That was guard Artis White there with the three. War, like I said, saw him warming up before the game. Didn't see him miss an open three as he makes his first one there, and he gets that one swatted by Connor Pelham. Rejected by Connor Pelham down low. Bellamy has it now. He's going to bring it up and try and find a bucket for the Bulldogs. Much needed here. Spin move in front and lays it in. Bellamy puts one in, and the Bulldogs have 20 up on the board. Or just spin and finish right there. Oh, yeah, I've nagged the isolation game all night, but it's worked in the past couple possessions for the Bulldogs. White hanging on to possession here for the Broncos. He passes it off to Holmes, and now it's back up at the top of the point with Bars. Taken away there, and Bellamy's going to hang on to it. Another swat by Connor Pelham. He is playing aggressive defensively here. Warwick has it now. He's standing on the outside of the arch on the near side. Back up to Bellamy at the point. He's going to dribble drive, gives it back up to Warwick. Warwick going to walk the line. He gives it to McDivitt. McDivitt's the three-point shooter for this Bulldog team, but he's going to pass it out. Far side drive and a lay-in there for Connor Pelham. And a very nice play by Connor Pelham. He has been electric here tonight for Adrian College's Bulldogs. But what, I'd like, what I would like to point out is there were two or three drives to the basket there by the Bulldogs. You have to force the defense to move. When you move your body in the ball, the defense has to do the same. Drive in front. And a lay-in, easy there for Barr. He's got around a couple Bulldog defenders, and the score is 39-22 with 13.45 to go here in the second half. And after the timeout, Western Michigan really picking up the pace here. Yeah, they're seeing a lot of movement now. The Bulldogs are going to have to adjust to it accordingly. Warwick with it. He gives it off, hands it over to his counterpart, Tyler Guillory, and we're going to see a foul, and Guillory will go to the line for two shots here. I love the aggressiveness out of the timeout from the Bulldogs. They finally decided to just take the ball to the rim. They're going very hard to the rim, and now they've gotten open layups and now free throws off of their hard efforts. And it's translated over to the defensive side as they've gotten a few steals as well. Yeah, DJ, the whole pace of the game has changed here following that media timeout. Really surprised first. that we didn't see that from the beginning, that – you know, Western didn't come out and say, we're a D1 squad. We're definitely more conditioned than these guys are. Let's press them. Let's make it a track meet early. Very surprised that they didn't do that, and they went very methodical and slowed it down, but probably because Coach Bates would like to see them work through some things and really um, figure out what they want to do this year. Guillory hits the second. Broncos will bring it up. Time is 13.25 left to go here in the second half. The Broncos have possession and the lead. It's 39-23 here on the Adrian College Sports Network. A lot of movement there by Martin, and we're going to get a whistle. Broncos will be inbounding it here from the baseline on the near side of the basket. He got jostled by the Bulldog right there. Kind of lost that one in WMU staying on offense. Holmes has it. He drives. Reverse lay-in. Doesn't go. Hits off of that corner of the rim, and now Mr. TV, Darius Wooten, has possession of it for the Bulldogs. Gives it back up to Bellamy at the top. He's going to look to drive. He goes in. He's going to post up here, looking for an outlet pass. Now he's going to drive in and delivers a shot off the backboard. It's going to go in and out, and Wooten's going to be there for the rebound. The Bulldogs will keep possession here. It's back up to McDivitt, and then over to Anzara. 
who's going to post now and get into the key. He goes up. It's blocked in front, gets his own rebound, and passes out to McDivitt at three-point land. He gives it down to Anzara. Anzara drives again, goes up with the hook and gets it. Make it 39-25 with 12.30 left. And that was right over the very long reach of Jalen Holmes right there. Just couldn't get a hold of that one. Very proud of the Bulldogs here as they noticed that they've taken Lee and right off of the floor. So the Bulldogs have gone inside and taken advantage of the Twin Towers being out. Down in front of Bulldogs looking to play some defense here. Can't do it. Laid in there by Freeman. And the, Bull, uh, the Bulldogs give up another two points here, 41-25 in favor of the Broncos. Wooten has it now, crossing over the timeline. Gives up to Bellamy at the top. Bellamy, dribble drive, goes up, and he hits! That was an awkward shot there from Bellamy, but it finds the back of the net and make it 41-27 with 11.45 left to go. We love the circus shots. <laughs> Definitely thought that we could have been an and one, though. We live for the circus shots around here. Bars has it, he sends it over to Holmes. Holmes back up to Martin. Martin's gonna look to drive, he sends it back up to his teammate Freeman. Down over to Holmes, Holmes sends it into Bars. Bars is the big man on the floor for the Broncos. He's gonna get pestered by Bellamy and a travel is called. That one was forced there by Kendall Bellamy as we have a whistle and a media timeout. The under 12 here with 11.24 left to go. 41-27, the bench is fired up. Bellamy all kinds of fired up right there. I love that play. And we will take a break. Be right back with more Bulldog Hoops here on AC Sportsnet. It has dozens of athletics programs, and winning is a staple on our campus. We have the culture of winning in and out of the classroom. This is a place where young men and women grow into professionals for life. Are you interested in learning more about the Bulldog experience? Visit adrianbulldogs.com and the Recruit Me tab to be recruited to play your sport of choice today. If you have what it takes, you could be a Bulldog in no time. And welcome back here to Reed Fieldhouse at Western Michigan University's campus here in Kalamazoo, Michigan, as your Adrian College Bulldogs are taking on the Western Michigan University Broncos in a men's basketball matchup. It is a 41-27 game with just under uh, 12 minutes to go here in the, uh, the second half, excuse me. And Matt, what have you seen so far from the Bulldogs in the second half as they seem to put up a few more points on the board? You know, after the last media timeout, they came out firing on all cylinders. It looked really good. That's what you want to see more of. And these timeouts are going to be to the benefit of Adrian. When you're playing at that D3 level, you're not used to getting these media timeouts. You're not used to having these conversations this many times throughout the day. Coach Lindsay's going to take high advantage of it. And we're going to see, I think, a big push coming out of the media timeout on the other side, Western have to keep up the pressure. They're playing really well right now, but I don't think they're at the capacity that they want to be at and how they want to play. They're letting Adrian control the tempo a little bit, and that's always going to play into the favor of the underdog here, which is Adrian College. Yeah, they're definitely going off a lot of momentum. And as both teams retake the floor here, I just want to thank you for uh, joining our stream and watching from wherever you are watching. You can find us at any time at adrian.edu forward slash live on any social media, Adrian College TV, along with YouTube at Adrian College TV. Or if you're watching back in the Lenawee County area, 107.9 FM Adrian uh, is where you can find us. Bulldogs are going to bring it up the floor with Mr. TV Darius Wooten as he crosses the timeline. And Sarah is going to take the screen from Warwick and Warwick pops out with the ball. Warwick's going to drive down low with a post up. He kicks it out to Ansara. Ansara kicks it to Pelham. Pelham with the three. And the three is good from Connor Pelham. That is his second three of the night as the Bulldogs have finally started to warm up. And they have 12 points here in the second half. Cash money. The senior from Michigan center drains one right there for Adrian's Bulldogs. Here we go. Up top here with uh, his number 11, Rafael Cruz, looking to pass it down low as the Bulldogs are all over it defensively. And we're going to get a foul here on Robert Warwick on the entry pass down low to Lee. You know, that's a really good foul there by Warwick. I actually like it a lot because it's showing the emotion that this team is playing this. They're within 11 right now of this Western Michigan team, and they're going to keep playing the way that they play. I mean, I don't want to say anything and jinx anything. Let me knock on some wood here. You remember what I said in the car, Matt? I said they need to be down by about 10 with about 10 minutes left to pull off some sort of miracle. 41-30 with 10 and a half to go on the day. 
Yep. Uh, down low here with Wright. He's going to get tied up with Connor Pelham, and he's going to take the foul. 10:36 uh, remaining here in the second half as we're going to get two free throws for the Broncos. That was a good foul there as well. You, you go up strong. You go up strong. You, you take the you take the hit there. But when it comes down to it, this is where we're going to have to see the Bulldogs make a big transition. They're going to have to get some key turnovers, get some takeaways, generate the turnover. Don't rely on Western giving it to you here. First free throw is no good from right at the charity stripe. And if you're the Broncos with this game coming near an end, you got to be making free throws because you're going to get on the line quite a bit. Bellamy comes back on the floor. He's got three fouls. And on the other side of things, the Bulldogs still going to have to rely on Nolan and Zara, who actually also has three fouls as well. Second free throw is good for right. Warwick's going to inbound the ball to Kendall Bellamy as they're working right to left on your radio dial. Kendall Bellamy passes the timeline. He's going to give it up to Kobe Price up top. Kobe Price is going to look over to Robert Warwick. He gets a screen from Kendall Bellamy. He's going to give it to him up top on the pick and pop. Kendall moves it back to Warwick. Warwick drives down low, looks for the kick out. He hits a slash in Kobe Price for the easy hook pass as the bleed is now down to 10. 10-point ball game, and you guys know I'm not much of a homer here for Adrian College TV. I like to keep it professional. The home opener for the career of head coach Clayton Bates, and things are getting a little hairy inside of the zoo. Yep, as we see Lee throw the ball away here for the Broncos, the Bulldogs are now going to get possession of the ball with 10 minutes left with a 42-32 deficit as um, – Artis White checks back into the game for you the You know head coach Bates is going to know that he can't take a timeout here because that's only going to benefit Adrian, even though he might want to after a key turnover like that, but he knows that bench is going to go crazy. Oh, my goodness. Kendall Bellamy almost scores down low. Yeah, that was a great drive by Kendall Bellamy. Uh, just off from the layup as Artis White is going to bring it back up the floor as the Broncos work left to right on your radio dial. Rafael Cruz here driving on the baseline. He takes it to the middle. Goes up for the layup on Kendall Bellamy, and he scores. Two more points for the Broncos as Robert Warwick is now going to bring it the opposite way for the Bulldogs. Robert gives it up to Kendall up top. Kendall gives it over to Ansara. Ansara back over to Bellamy. Bellamy with a few dribble moves up top, looking for a handoff as he sends it between his legs. Pulls up. No good as it rims in and out. Artis White with a rebound as he's going to push the tempo for the Broncos and then slow it down. Gives it over to Lee on the wing. Wing with a dribble pull up on the elbow, and it's good. That's two more points nice for the Broncos as they extend their lead to 14 with just over nine minutes to go here in the second half. That was Robert cash. Warwick's going to bring it up slow. He's going to call a timeout for the Bulldogs. Listen, if it's if it's last year this time and I say, hey, guys, just so you know, next December we're going to play Western Michigan and only be trailing by 14 in men's varsity basketball the night after they lose to Michigan State by just 20 on national television. With nine minutes left, would you believe me? Yes. What would you say? You would say yes. Only because I would be under the assumption that this Bulldogs team would still have senior star guard Jordan Harris, who has transferred to Grand Valley State University. And, of course, superstar, big man down low inside. Everybody misses Jeremy Kalanji as well. Listen, and, and his battle mate, who is now an assistant coach in this Bulldogs program, Keyshawn Wyatt Morris. This time last year, COVID wasn't a conversation. Um, none of this had happened with sports. It, it would be unfathomable to think that the Broncos, for any reason, would accept a game against the Bulldogs the day after they play Michigan State University in that battle against a top 10 team in the nation. I cannot believe this. They're trailing by just 14 with nine minutes left in the game. This has to be one of the most significant contests in the history of the school, and it's a scrimmage. Yeah. This it, is it, unbelievable. It's been impressive, to say the least, by head coach Kyle G. What he has done with this Bulldog basketball program is nothing short of a miracle. The Bulldog basketball team was not where it needed to be before Kyle Lindsay got here, and he's really turned this team around and, and made it a culture that is a winning culture. It doesn't just happen on the court. It happens in the classroom as well. Kyle Lindsay is very adamant about his players having a high GPA and working hard in the classroom. Listen, you've heard me talk about Kyle Lindsay, and I talk him the same way. I talk about him the same way I talk about a Harry Bailey or a Jim Deere or a Craig Rainey. And you know what the staple is of guys like that? It's the same thing you see in a Sean Skelly. You see it in a Gary Estalos, a Hannah Griffin. They care. They want these athletes not only to be fantastic on the playing surface, but unreal in the classroom, and they want that to transition into life afterwards. That sounds like a cheesy sales pitch. I really mean that. I really mean that. Kyle Lindsay loves these guys. This is his team. 
Connor Pelham, Kobe Price, Kendall Bellamy, Robert Warwick, and uh, Gabe McDevitt are the five back on the floor for the Bulldogs as they come out of the timeout. And Pelham's going to miss a three, but it's boarded by Robert Warwick in the corner. Warwick posting up right now down low. Warwick with a few pump fakes, kick it over into the corner to Pelham. Pelham up onto the wing to Bellamy. Bellamy with a quick pull up. No good and over the top of the backboard for out of bounds. Broncos are going to take it over and send it the other way. You really need one of those to hit. And you can see the, the offensive changes. They're going to try and rely on maybe a deep shot from three-point land and then get the rebound and go up for a two-point. Lee here on the wing with it for the Broncos after Artis White brings it up. Wright sends it over to uh, Freeman. Freeman's going to send it down to Wright, who's posting up and gets a double team from Warwick and, Bell and Bellamy. Double team backs off, and they get a cut from Rafael Cruz, and he gets oh an easy layup what a play. wide open at the rim. That was a gorgeous play right there, Matt. Yeah, a simple cut play for the Broncos, and they found the open man and laid it in. Gabe McDevitt now has it and sends it over to Bellamy up top. Bellamy is going to take his dribbles, and he now has it at the free throw line. It gets knocked away, and he regains it, sends it over to McDevitt. McDevitt over to Pelham. Pelham with a move to the rim, sends it out to Robert Warwick in the corner. Warwick to Price, Price with the drive, and he's going to get called with the offensive foul as he leans on the shoulder. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back in just 30 seconds here on the Adrian College Sports Network. She has dozens of athletics programs, and winning is a staple on our campus. We have the culture of winning in and out of the classroom. This is a place where young men and women grow into professionals for life. Are you interested in learning more about the Bulldog experience? Visit adrianbulldogs.com and the Recruit Me tab to be recruited to play your sport of choice today. If you have what it takes, you could be a Bulldog in no time. Welcome back here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Just under eight minutes left in the night. It's getting late here on ACSN, 48 to 32. Western Michigan University Broncos up. Listen, I knocked on wood. This cannot be the announcer's curse. The Bulldogs had it tight there just a few moments ago, and they've been dangerous here. Do you think WMU is going to keep pulling away, or does Kyle Lindsay have a, a few tricks left up his sleeve? Um, obviously, Kyle Lindsay has a few tricks left up his sleeve. He always has a few tricks up his sleeve, whether it's the beginning of the game, the middle, the end, after the game, way before the game. He's always got a few tricks. But as far as his Broncos team, it's going to come down to – whether they're going to keep pounding it inside and being efficient down there or if the or if the Bulldogs can continue to turn them over and create offensive opportunities for themselves. You know, we've seen it throughout this whole entire second half. These timeouts have been huge for the Bulldogs. They've been able to come out and play really strong. But on the other side of things, right now Western is pushing and they are making it adamant that they're not going to just roll over and let this game stay close. They're going to extend this lead and, and make the plays. We saw it on that last bucket. It was a beautiful cut play for the Broncos, and it, it extended their lead even more so. But it's one of those killer plays where you're like, oh, he was wide open. Bulldog defense lapsed and gave him an easy bucket. Well, here we go. Just under eight minutes left in the contest. Division three, Adrian College is here inside of the zoo. Reed Fieldhouse in Kalamazoo, Michigan, doing battle with NCAA Division I basketball team the Western Michigan University Broncos. It's a 16 point game, WMU up 48 to 32 and they have the ball right now, getting to work here offensively. Coming down the floor with the ball, Artis White gave it off right there, now Cruz Jr. with it. Cruz Jr. looking, goes back inside, Artis White, gorgeous little pass across the arc right there and a nice finish up top off the glass by Titus Wright, the sophomore. We've been talking about him all night, this is about the ninth time I've said it, he is a monster down low. Yeah, no one else I expected to uh, get the ball there. He's got 17 points in the game so far. Trouble here for the Bulldogs. The intercept and the finish off the glass for the Broncos, but the whistle sounds late down inside of the paint. Yeah, he's going to get the continuation there after the play. It's going to be an and one as he made the layup, and uh, the foul is going to be on Connor Pelham trying to come through and swipe at the ball. And a six foot five sophomore from Gary, Indiana, Jalen Holmes right there getting the bucket. So as it stands, a 20 point game here inside of the zoo. 20 points, and it still feels close on the floor. Close. And the and the Broncos have pushed a lot harder. You're seeing them make the key plays they need to be making, not making the mistakes that were the simple turnovers and travels. And that's going to be huge in the long run here at KZU. I'm going to be honest. This game is only so close because the Bulldogs only have 
two three-point field goals made tonight, and both of them made by Connor Pelham. Gillery to Warwick. Warwick driving down low from mid-range. This one off the front of the iron, nothing doing. Cruz Jr. running the point here for the Broncos. 25 seconds on the shot clock. He crosses over the arc. Couple of quick passes and now driving down inside. Barr comes off the front of the iron. Kendall Bellamy gathers this one up. Running down the floor. He's a force defensively. Leads all of NCAA D3 in blocks. Six foot six. He goes to work offensively. Fires from mid range. And that's a beautiful teardrop to make it 52 34 WMU lead. Yeah, it's his 14th point on the night. He's had quite a few of those Dirk Nowitzki type fadeaways tonight. So that seems to be his spot. Cruz Jr. close side along the arc for the Broncos. Pass down low. The big man right wants to fire. He's double teamed by Warwick and Bellamy. Long pass, far side. WMU goes to work driving and firing. And the whistle sounds as Martin the Jr. lets one go. I really like that play. If you're the Broncos, you're going to end up at the line. And it looks good because you're going up and playing hard and forcing the Bulldogs to follow you because you're going in at the right position and you're going up exactly how you need to. From the stripe, this is Martin. Broncos extend their lead to 19 here on ACSN. Thank you for joining us tonight. Gabriel Shry here with Matt Kibbe, DJ Hughes. Yeah, free throws have definitely been important for the Broncos tonight. I mean, they were eight for 14 in the first half and they've already missed a few here in the second half. So I'm sure Coach Bates will definitely be addressing free throws in the upcoming practices. Rims around, pops out. Robert Warwick gets to work offensively. Quick pass close side, that's Bellamy. Bellamy doesn't want to work with this one, gives it off to McDevitt who sends it right back to him. The pass is now tipped away and intercepted. Broncos with a two on one chance and the little kiss off the glass for the bucket. It is now 55-34 with just under six minutes remaining in the contest. And I love to see that the Broncos bench, every single one of them was up and cheering for those guys that are out on the floor. Bellamy, a little bit of quick footwork, trying to fire, and he is packed here. Down just inside of the charity stripe. Jalen Holmes went up top and contested his shot effectively. Now Holmes with a steal. He's on the move to the offensive end of the floor. Ladles this one up and it rolls across the iron and won't fall for the Broncos. Adrian's Bulldogs have it tripped away again. Now back to work offensively and the foul as he can't finish at the rim. Bulldogs are trying to push really hard right now. They're, they're letting the tempo of Western Michigan control this game and they're making poor decisions on those pass attempts and that's what's going to come down and come back to haunt you. You got to play smart, play within yourself. Don't let Western Michigan control what you need to do. Yeah, because for, for a very um, large portion of the second half, I'd say about uh, five or six minutes, the Bulldogs were in all control of this game and everything was going the way they wanted it to and they were running the momentum and they were pushing the pace and everything was going the way they wanted to. So now that they've fallen under the pressure of the Broncos, things are much different. 55-34, 5.15 left in the game. Warwick drives, pass up top to Guillory. He gives it off to McDevitt who goes right back to him. Long ball, this one flatters off the iron right there, down off the glass and into the hands of a waiting Bronco. They'll get to work offensively as Adrian Martin takes it down the floor. Martin with it, working back up near the center of the court. Now he's driving down towards the arc. Just inside of it, he passes this down to the corner. Couple of quick moves here, looking dicey with the basketball. The Rock just outside of the painted area, driving and ladling this up near the iron. Nothing doing for Barr as the whistle sounds. Yeah, um, a lot of travels here tonight. Honestly, from both sides, a lot um, when they're down low working in the post. Footwork is definitely a thing of magic down there. Well, for our folks who are just basketball fans, let me tell you what this crew right here has learned on AC Sportsnet so far this year. When a Bulldog Division Three team plays one D1 team, they're more ready next time out against a different Division I opponent. We watched the Bulldog ice hockey team play Bowling Green State University and the Falcons. They didn't do super well, but then they did very well against Lake Superior State University and the Lakers. They looked very, very good at home. Lost two to one on ACSN. So maybe the Bulldogs will take a few notes from tonight and carry them over to Wednesday when they play Eastern Michigan University and the Eagles on the road.
Yeah, there on the last play, Bulldogs get a breakaway, and it was a three-on-one, and awesome, awesome, awesome Euro step by Tyler Guillory, but he misses the layup when he easily should have just dumped it off to one of his two friends. Matt, uh, an exciting contest here so far tonight. Just four minutes left to go. 55-34, WMU up big here at home. What are you thinking right now? What's running through your head? Well, you know, I'm going to go from the standpoint of Coach Lindsay, and I think he's kind of getting to that point where you kind of are like, hey, you know, it's a 19-point lead. It, it's right where we kind of where we expect it to be. Let's get some of our young guys in and get them the experience and get them ready for MIAA play. Right before that timeout, and it became a media timeout, but we see Coach Lindsay was going to send off the platoon. He was sending in four players. They were going to all be the youngsters on the team and just take advantage of everything that they had going on and push forward to be able to do what they need to do and and the youngsters are going to be a huge aspect for coach Lindsay here and get ready for eastern michigan where they're going to see more playing time as well as when we go into mi double a's play in the spring as that's just important for them coach Lindsay knows that he's going to take advantage of it oh 100 percent Coach Lindsay loves the opportunities that he's gotten this year, and that comes back to all of the hard work that Lindsay has put in at this program. He's brought this program from down toward the bottom of the MIAA. The, um, they actually won their first MIAA conference championship last year, so he's definitely put in the work here, and now other programs are starting to see that, and they're rewarding them with matchups like Western Michigan University, Eastern Michigan University, and so now the Bulldogs can continue to progress. Not many other sporting events going on in the world right now to keep you up to date on, but Monday Night Football just wrapping up, and uh, I'm not happy. I like my Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I'm a big fan of the black and gold, whether it's Adrian College or the National Football League's Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Washington football team has defeated them 23-17 to on MNF. They are no longer undefeated. They now stand at 11-1 and on the season. Love it. Love it. Hate it. Honestly love it. Love it. Hate it here. Hey, I mean, my team ain't doing the best. They already got three losses on the year. But I do think we have the MVP of the NFL and Aaron Rodgers. Oh, you're a Packers guy. Oh, oh come on. Hey, I always forget you're a Packers guy. Hey, say hey, hey, actually, while I got the time. Greg Jennings. Greg Jennings, Greg a Western Jennings. alum. Awesome wide receiver here at Western. Awesome Western wide receiver right, at Commerce right. Central. Did great things here. Went on to play for the Green Bay Packers. Is my relative, my cousin, uh, distant in my family tree. Actually, not too distant. My granddad and his dad are first No kidding. Cousins. I mean, so, I, I'll give you a little credit for that. So that is You get why to be a Packers fan a and Packers get a pass. Fan. And then Aaron Rodgers came along. And I'm like, I can't go anywhere. Mike Prang, the assistant SID down on the floor, lives in Chicago. He does not get a pass for being a Packers fan. He is uh, skipping out on his hometown feeling. Chicago Bears <laughs> bandwagoner. It is 55-34 with 3.47 to go on the day here inside of the zoo. And the Bulldogs, Mr. TV, is inbounding for them to keep them working offensively. Ansara with it along the arc here, waiting, looking, trying to drive, backing down the big man. Wants to take it, fires off the glass. This is in. What a play right there. Great move by Ansara. He's made a couple nice moves down in the post tonight as that was his fourth point of the night. Adrian Martin gave this off, going back across the arc. Western Michigan working with the basketball. This one far side again. Martin with it drives, kicks this back up top of the arc. Long ball. This is no good off the front of the iron. Coming down with it are the Bulldogs. Darius Wooten gets to work. He is being bodied up right there by Dalen Hamilton. Hamilton taking it to him, and Mr. TV gets hit with a whistle. I'm surprised that foul came so late. I mean, he was draped all over him since the minute he touched the ball. So um, definitely a great composure there by Mr. TV to uh, maintain his dribble. It was stressful to watch. Dalen Hamilton is a freshman, but six foot three, played for Klein Forest in Houston, Texas. He's a force, and he'll check out here. Three minutes, nine seconds left in the game as Darius Wooten inbounds the ball and gets it right back. He drives, pass outside, long ball, cash. One back for the Bulldogs as they get a three-pointer to make it 55-39. Cash money from number 14, Cass Hoganowski, who has presented himself as a shooter on this team, uh, probably the second-best knockdown shooter right behind Gabe McDevitt. Martin went to Bars. Bars ladles it off. The drive and the score. Luke Tallier, the junior from Paw Paw, Michigan, takes that one home. Love Paw Paw, Michigan. Paw Paw. He must not... Um, Oh, he must not have actually been to Pawpaw. <laughs> There's not much out in Pawpaw, I tell you. 
Hansara drives down inside of the painted area, sends this one off the front of the rim, nothing doing. Here comes our man from Paw Paw. It's Tallier who stops up just outside of the arc, working with a basketball, goes over to Martin. Martin gonna come back close side of the arc, Western Michigan moving this all around, waiting for some space here. Adrian Martin looked like he was gonna fire, instead ladled that one off. They come back to the close side of the arc. Now the drive and firing this one up and off the glass as the whistle will sound call in favor of Western Michigan's Broncos. They'll have the chance for the old fashioned three point play as they lead by 20, just 204 left on the day. As we're waiting for the old fashioned three point play and the free throw that's coming up, there is not much in Paw Paw, but they do put out amazing basketball players. Tolliver is not the first to come out of Paw Paw and have a basketball career in the D1 area. Silence shrouds the gymnasium as this one comes off the front of the iron here. Arius Wooten getting back to work offensively. Wooten with a cross, dips this off close side. Bulldogs, couple of quick moves. Trouble for their man there as he ladles this back up top. The freshman working with it, wants to go down low, has this tipped out of his hands, and the pass is sent out of play by the likes of Adrian Martin. You know, we're starting to see that the D1 presence from Western Michigan and, and the difference between D3 and D1 with some of the players they're making, some of the speed and, and the stamina that they have late here in this contest. Bulldogs inbound this one. Darius Wooten loses it down there inside of the paint. Three seconds on the shot clock as Western scooped that up. But the whistle sounds before they can head to the offensive end of the floor here. Only the fifth foul of the night, so not quite um, in the bonus for the Bulldogs so they will inbound under their own basket as we're gonna see some check-ins here that have yet to be in the game. Number one, Ben Pacer. Number 11, Delano Smith. Number four, Jonathan Duvall. And number 15, Dominique Marr. All check-in for the Bulldogs. Number 19, Richmond coming up with a win over Wofford. Final tally, 77-72. 96 seconds left in this contest here on ACSN. Bulldog man drives, freshman loses the ball, and going up to gather this one is the Broncos. They're back on the offensive end of the floor. This one tipped away by the little man. Quick pass back to him, he's outside of the arc. Back up top, freshman wants to fire, hesitating here. Moving this around the arc, Bulldogs waiting for their chance to get open. Driving, losing it, and the whistle sounds as he is jostled. You know, I'm really excited to see Williams over the next four years with his link that he has right now. You're seeing him play like a freshman right now, but if Coach Lindsay has four years with him, that senior season is going to be huge for the Bulldogs and Williams on the floor. Yeah, and he's, he's a skinnier guy, uh, much of a build, kind of like Kevin Durant. But when Kyle, uh, Coach Kyle Lindsay is done with him, he'll definitely broaden out, have some muscle on him as well. And another freshman, Jonathan Duvall, the freshman from Ohio right there, gets the three ball. 59-42 with 60 seconds left. This will not be an over and back as the ball is tipped away from the Broncos by a Bulldog. They regather and get back to work. Adrian Martin, three ball, cash. 62-42 remains a 20-point contest. 45 seconds left on the day. Duvall back to work offensively. The freshman looking, waiting. Kicks this over to Williams. That's six foot ten freshman that Matt's so excited about. The handoff. Adrian working with it along the arc. Back to Duvall. He fake pumps, drives with it. Sends this back out. Long range. This off the front of the iron. Nothing doing. 30 seconds left on the day. The Broncos are going to take their time. There's no shot clock. And it looks like they're going to try and coast to the finish here with a 20-point win on ACSN. What a game. What an effort by the Bulldogs. That is to be commended and written in the history books. Yeah, amazing game from the Bulldogs. Very happy that they came out and fought as hard as they did. They kept it very close for a very large portion of this game and eventually just let it slip away to 20 points at the end. You know, it's really weird not hearing the crowd going crazy at the end of a contest like that. But, you know, when it comes down to it, the Bulldogs played great. You had a 20-point loss against a D1 opponent, which is, truthfully, I think a lot better than a lot of us expected. And you get to do it all over again on Wednesday when you go to another Mac foe in Eastern Michigan. And now you know how a D1 team is going to play. You might have a different scheme, but you know how it's going to be better prepared and we mentioned it earlier when Adrian faces a D1 opponent for a second time it's typically better than the first time they did.
62-42, the final tally here on the Adrian College Sports Network. The Bulldogs with a valiant effort against Division I, Western Michigan University, and the Broncos. We'll be right back with our post-game show here inside of the zoo. Don't go anywhere. The current student body president here at Adrian College. I chose AC because the campus simply feels like home. Everywhere I go, I know the amenities are there to help me succeed and get to the next level in my career. If you want to see what Adrian College has to offer, you can schedule an in-person visit at adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Welcome back here to Reed Fieldhouse on the campus of Western Michigan University as your Adrian College men's basketball team just took on Western Michigan University. They did end up dropping the game 62-42, but honestly, as a Bulldog fan myself, I thought this was an amazing game to not only be here for, but to watch and for the Bulldogs to participate in. Matt? Yeah, I thought it was a really good showing for the Bulldogs. And, you know, you you have a couple tough losses to start the year, 0-3, oh, and, and then you come in and you play really well against a Division One opponent in Western Michigan. And it looks really good on the scorecard. There was a lot of key moments. And you see a little bit of the youth come through for the Bulldogs. And, and you see a couple turnovers and some key moments where they, g they get a turnover and then they give one up. And I think that's going to be something you're going to have to look forward and when you play Eastern Michigan, but overall, you got to be impressed. And Western Michigan, not an easy opponent. Don't think they're not one of the ca high caliber teams within the MAC and within Division One. Yeah, they just had to go and play Michigan State, who's in the top ten. But when it comes down to it, they're a really good team, and they showed us that tonight. They're really good, really strong. They have depth too, which is really important at the Division One level, and especially within MACation, as they like to call it. And it's something that's really fun to watch, and I will see a lot of the bonus for the Bulldogs when they get into MIAA play. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't honestly a great night from the Bulldogs tonight. Um, for example, shooting woes in the first half. Um, 8 for 29 field goal percentage, 0 from 11 from the three-point land, and no uh, charity stripe opportunities. And then in the second half, they were 11 for 31, three for seven and then only one for two from the charity strike, which means they're only one for two for the entire game. And if you're going to come in and play a D1 squad or do well against a D1 squad, you're going to have to get to the free throw line. You look at that on the other side of things where Western at the charity stripe was 10 for 24 for the game. They had 24 shots from for free, essentially, that, that were able to capitalize 10% or 10 points out of. And that's a huge difference. That Those 10 points make this a 20-point difference or a 10-point difference in the final score margin. And you see that the Bulldogs only went to the stripe, like you said, for one one two-point or one free throw t advantage for them. And, and it comes down to a point where when you have that opportunity, you need to find a way to drive and, and gather those fouls. Because when it came down to it, you had Kendall Bellamy, who ended the game with four fouls. And a couple other Bulldogs ended with three fouls. And that's going to hurt you in the long run. You need your key players to be smart at the beginning because Kendall Bellamy picked up two fouls within the first what, five, eight minutes of the game. That's going to hurt you in the long run. That's going to be something that you want to change and you want to fix when you get into Eastern. And maybe that comes on the coaching side of things where Coach Lindsay might take him out at that first media timeout no matter what, save him knowing that he's going to be that player that's going to play hard as well as Warwick as well. So you see those younger guys. And I think we saw something in that last – five minutes of play where we had a couple platoon substitutions come in and we see that the freshmen and the younger guys Williams we were talking high praise of I, I'd like to see him come in a little bit earlier maybe against an eastern Michigan or even when you play against another d3 opponent you want to see those guys come in you want to see those guys play really well and I think you want to utilize them and know and, and you also let them know like hey you're our guy. You're, you're the guy we want to go to. You're our future. You're who we want to be, the core of this group. Let's do it now. Let's see what you can provide for us against a D1 opponent. And Williams showed really well. Duvall showed really well, hitting that three-pointer late. You take advantage of those guys. Utilize them. And, and, and when you have that early run in the first half, I would have liked to see him check in in the first half. Even though it seemed a lot closer, that might have been the reason why not. But you can trust him a little bit. Let them know that they got the ability. Let them know they can do it. Let them know they can handle it. I want to see a little bit more out of the Bulldogs against an Eastern Michigan on Wednesday night when ACSN is there as well. Yeah, and um, speaking of the, uh, that game on Wednesday night, obviously the uh, Bulldogs are going to be looking 
to improve. Looking at a couple more stats tonight, the Bulldogs lost the turnover battle 19-18. to They lost the points from turnover battle 12-19. to They were heavily outscored in the paint 46-22. to They had no fast break points, even though they caused 18 turnovers. And they were outscored on the bench 20-14. to And they were also out-rebounded 41-33. to So they didn't honestly win any of those hustle statistical categories that you need to win if you're in a tough game like this so um my question to you matt is what should we expect to see from the bulldogs as they try to improve on their performance tonight you know i think we're gonna see a little bit more i I don't want to say shock factor but realistically they came in with these starstruck eyes like oh we're at western michigan we're against a d1 opponent what are we gonna have to do now you've played them now you know hey, this is what it's like going to this a big arena that you've really never played in. And how are you going to anticipate that when you go to Eastern Michigan? They know that. They can't be starstruck. They're not going to look at these guys and say, oh, wow, this is something crazy that we're not used to. You're ready for it. You're aware. You know how it's going to be. I think that's going to be a big, important factor for the Bulldogs when they go into Eastern Michigan. And, and you know, maybe we call it early, knock on some wood, call an upset alert for uh, what Adrian versus Eastern Michigan. And, and you see when you play like this against Western Michigan, who, who realistically could be the best team in the MAC, Eastern Michigan, maybe not so much. What is that going to have a difference in as Mike Prang joins, uh, joins us here in the booth? I think the big thing for the Bulldogs moving forward going into Wednesday, Wednesday is they have to continue to play defensively like they did tonight and rebound like they did tonight. They did a very good job at that. I mean, they only lost the rebound battle by eight. And they only lost the turnover battle by one. So they're definitely doing the right things in rebounding and turning over a, defen- or a Division One team. But they have to get away from the isolation game offensively and move the ball in their bodies to create offensive options. And you could see those moments, too, where a couple – different changes in possession, a couple different changes in scheme, and those numbers are probably closer and maybe even in the advantage of Adrian when it comes down in the long run. And we see a lot of that. It, it could come down to it, a couple key mistakes here, key mistakes there. You let you get a turnover, and then you give up a turnover. How are you going to change in when it comes down to that run? Mike, what did you see on the floor today? I mean, I saw a lot of positive things. I mean, it's it's not every day a Division three school goes up against a Division one school, and you saw at the end of the game when uh, Coach Wincy kind of empties his bench, there's a huge size advantage. Um, and that's that's just the Division One talent compared to the D3 talent. Are there some big guys at D3? Yes, there are, but not as big as the guys that are playing at the Division One level. So I think going into Wednesday, Bulldogs are going to be prepared. They've had enough time. They've ha- they've been able to watch enough film on Eastern Michigan. They're starting to run a new office, uh, offense according to their assistant coach, t- uh, Tim Kaiser. So today it played out very well against a Division One opponent, and now going into Wednesday they'll have another one, and I think they'll – uh, be able to put a pretty solid performance out. Any final thoughts from anybody here today uh, about what's going on and what we should expect Wednesday? DJ, you got any final thoughts before we head out for the night? Yeah, great game from the senior, le- senior leadership of the men's basketball program here at Adrian College. Looking to see Robert Warwick, Kendall Bellamy, um, Tyler Guillory, some of those guys come back alive. Nolan and Sara again on Wednesday to lead this. And then for those freshmen to step up for them to get some more opportunities. Gabe McDevitt, who didn't score tonight, hopefully looking for his shot to come alive on Wednesday. So definitely some positive upside moving forward for the Bulldogs. And I was happy for this opportunity. It was fun for me, and I'm sure it was fun for those guys. Yeah, the final score here was 62-42 in favor of Western Michigan University. I'll tell you what, we got a long drive back to Adrian, and we're going to want to get on our horse and get back there right now. So we're going to send you on your way. Thank you for tuning in to the Adrian College Sports Network. Again, the final score, 62-42 in favor of Western Michigan. And for those of you listening on WVAC, Adrian, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to follow us at Adrian College TV on all social media platforms, and including TikTok, which is run by our very own Megan Abbey. We'll send you on your way, send you back to your regularly scheduled program here from the Western Michigan University for Gabriel Stride to John Hughes. I'm Matt Kibbe. Have a great night and stay safe. Want to learn more about Adrian College Television? To find out more about ACTV, you can visit our website at adriancollege.tv. You can find direct links to our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms there. Bulldog students can submit a request to become an announcer for ACTV. 
fans can see press releases about upcoming events and what's happening at the media production house. Visit adriancollege.tv for more. The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, and learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. Adrian College is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, character, hard work, grit, leaders who can electrify sold out crowds, got out a last line shift, will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more. fans connect with Adrian College TV on social media to be updated when we're broadcasting live, to see highlights, plays of the week, and much more. Adrian College Television is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. ACTV's handle is at Adrian College TV on every form of social media. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing to the home of the Bulldogs, Adrian College TV. Bulldog fans connect with Adrian College TV on social media to be updated when we're broadcasting live, to see highlights, plays of the week, and much more. Adrian College Television is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. ACTV's handle is at Adrian College TV on every form of social media. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing to the home of the Bulldogs, Adrian College TV. Learn more about the process, schedule a visit, and even apply today. Visit adrian.edu forward slash admissions. adrian.edu forward slash admissions. We look forward to seeing you on campus. The Adrian College Sports Network wants you to join us in thanking one of our sponsors, the Carlton Lodge of Adrian. The Carlton Lodge offers a comfortable and convenient lodging experience. Carlton has spacious rooms and suites, fit for a peaceful night's sleep. Their amenities include a hot tub and pool, a 24-hour fitness center, a business center, and much more. A huge thanks to Adrian College's Choice of Lodging for sponsoring Bulldog Athletics.